Hey, everybody. Today, we're debating whether or not trans men are men, and we are starting right now with Vosh's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Vosh. The floor is all yours. Hi, I'm Vosh. So when we talk about subjects like these, there's this irritating semantic inflation with a bunch of different definitions we tend to have of... Um, man, women, sex, gender. I feel like oftentimes these discussions are had in bad faith or at least out of ignorance. A lot of these discussions have been settled, for example, like for years now, the idea that sex and gender are distinct things to be discussed distinctly, even if these categories are related to each other, this has been established and brought up in like basically every field and format that these issues get talked about in. So we have to relitigate it time and time and time again, right? Well, are there differences between sex and gender? Yes, of course there are. Uh, because we create the words and the terms, we create the ideas. If we believe that there are two distinct things to be referred to, then there are. That's how language works. You can distinguish words. That's the point of a language. Languages become more useful the more specific their terms are, after all. And I think that an example of language being very unspecific, of language being very vague and useless, would be one in which the term woman what does it mean to be a woman? What is a woman? What are categories or traits associated with woman? Is one which includes something as distinct, concrete, and biological as genitalia or gametes, but also something as ephemeral and socially influenced as long hair, sun hats, dresses, piercings, things that we absolutely culturally associate with women, but really have nothing to do with biology. We just arbitrarily decided those things look nice on women. And that's only now, you know? Uh, there have been plenty of times in the past that we've had different ideas on those particular subjects. So if language is to be useful, we have to acknowledge that we're talking about different things, sex and gender. Are trans men men? Well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by man. What category are you referring to? I've seen a lot of people try to define what specifically it means to be a man or a woman in biological terms. This fails quickly. Um, not because there's no worth to biological analysis, but because, again, that would be talking about sex. Obviously, we're playing different games here. If we're talking about man or woman as a social category, right, what definitions are we adhering to? And, you know, there's just not a consistent set. You just, you cannot come up with a consistent, concrete, defined, and reliable set of definitions to describe in a social sense what it means to be a man or a woman. Uh, without excluding people who you would otherwise consider to be a part of that group, or including people who you think shouldn't be a part of it. There's just no real way to do it, which is why I think that the entire concept is arbitrary and useless. Uh, we refer to people as men and women because it can be socially useful, it can be a shorthand, it can give you an idea of what to expect with them, what basic understandings or premises or expectations you should bring to the table when talking to them, but in terms of like rigidly trying to define in a concrete sense what it all means, I think that an incredible amount of time has been wasted on this particular subject. So until we decide to do away with the whole thing, until we recognize that we really are wasting our time with these definitions, yeah, trans men are men, trans women are women. I don't really care about the particulars. If somebody wants to be treated a given way, I think they should be. I really think when you say you're a man or a woman, you're basically just saying, Here's like a, a general block of expectations that I want you to um, keep in mind when engaging with me. This is a different set of social rules, you know. Take these ones, work with this. It's not just about femininity or masculinity, because femboys aren't women and butch women aren't men. You can want to bring a set of expectations to the table with gender and then contradict or challenge them with uh, non-conformist behavior. It's just a uh, part of the complexities behind social rules. And the less time we spend worrying about them and the more time we spend trying to fix material problems, I think we'll all be better off for it. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening, Vosh. And want to say, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, I'm your host, James. Want to let you know we are a neutral debate platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as we have plenty more debates coming up. You don't want to miss out on them, so hit subscribe right now. We're going to go over to Sanvi for her opening. Thanks so much for being with us. Sanvi, the floor is all yours. I can screen share? Yes. Okay, thank you.
but one second. <laughs> Whatever, I'll do it like this. Okay. Hi, thank you so much for hosting this debate, James. Thank you so much, Vosh, for being here. I'm really excited to talk with um, you today. And today I will argue the case for the proposition that trans men are not men. So before we get into it, I'll define a couple key terms. I'm sure Vosh is familiar with these um, just for the audience and just so we have a general understanding going into this debate. So a transgender man is somebody who is assigned female at birth, but who identifies as a man. A cisgender man is a non-trans man. Um, so a person who is assigned male at birth and who also identifies as a man. So what does why does trans man have man in the name? Um, I've heard people make this argument that if it has man in the name, it's no different than saying tall man or black man. But things like anti-truth have truth in the name, yet there are not truths. So one thing to alleviate some um, confusion about this is many people in the literature refer to trans men as trans identifying females. That way we're clear about exactly what we're talking about. And one more thing about why it's important to actually have this debate and to actually know what we're referring to when we refer to men is because we have we use the term. If we use a term, we should know what we're referring to. Otherwise, it's equivalent to just not understanding a different language. Um, if the word has no meaning, then we should cease to use it. And then it also is false that trans men are men if the word has no meaning. But first, I'll give a quick um, account for the biological view. For other species, we have adult males and females. Um, we have lion, buck, rooster, tiger, et cetera, et cetera. So it'd be quite astounding if we didn't have any adult human males or any word to refer to adult human males for our own species, yet we would have them for a plethora of other species. Um, clearly the word man is the best candidate for how to refer to adult human males. It's the ordinary use of the word. Um, it's generally most trans inclusive philosophers and activists agree that generally the term man and women are used to refer to adult human males and females. Under the social view of gender, which sounds like something sort of Vaj kind of posited in the opening statement, someone is a man if and only if he exhibits the social, cultural, or behavioral traits typically associated with males, right? Um, something like something typically associated with females, I guess, according to Vaj, would be long hair, sun hats dresses, piercings, things like that. So I assume the opposite would be the case for men, um, things that we typically associate with them. Uh, another definition I've heard thrown around there is a man is somebody who encompasses the social archetype of a male. Um, so when these people are referring to men, they're referring to people who encompass this social archetype. I think both of these definitions do not escape the objection of a feminine boy, as Vash mentioned earlier, but we can get more into that later in the debate. This view is the self-identification view. This view is very dominant in mainstream media nowadays. Um, someone is a man if and only if he identifies as a man. Obviously, this I'm not the first one to say this is a viciously circular definition. You don't obtain any feature in reality simply by identifying as having such. Um, and it's just a referent that's circular and uninformative ultimately. Okay. And uh, now I'll touch on the gendered brain view. This view has been floating around academia and the debate sphere. I've heard a lot of people say transgender people have brains closer to the opposite sex or the sex that they identify with, and therefore their identity is valid. Um, the first thing I will note is that not all trans men do have brains closer to males, and certain homosexual men may have brains closer to females than males, yet we would say that they're still men. So I would say that under the gendered brain view, it would still be false that trans men are men. Okay, and now we have the prescriptivist view. The prescriptivist view, I think Vashro touched on this too, is that we ought to treat trans men as men, um, maybe to reduce harm, increase happiness. As a courtesy, we ought to treat trans men as men. They want to be treated as men, so we should treat them as men. Um, one thing with this is that it conflates truth with utility, right? So it can be um, useful to lie to people sometimes, like in the case of terminally ill patients, sometimes we'll lie to them about their chances of survival in order to increase utility, increase their chance of survival, increase their well-being. Um, so a lie can be useful, but it has nothing to do with the proposition, are trans men men? Because it can both be true that trans men are not men and also be true that we ought to treat trans men like men. These two statements are not mutually exclusive. So under the prescriptivist view, it still is false that trans men are men. And I think that um, ultimately any view that you take on what you're referring to when you refer to a man, all of these different views, it, it just ends up being true that not all trans men are men. 
there's not a definition that can be 100% trans inclusive. And that's a big problem with this debate is um, the special pleading and the gish galloping that happens when a definition or a referent is given counter examples, and then people want to revert to something else. But I'm excited to get into this debate, especially like the social role view. And thank you, Vosh. And thank you, James, once again. I'm ready to get started. Of course. Thank you very much for that opening as well, Sanvi. We are going to jump into open conversation. Just a couple of quick housekeeping type things, folks. One, if you didn't know this, Modern Day Debate is available via podcast. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it. Check us out. It's 100% ad-free. What are you waiting for? Find us on your favorite podcast app right now. We're going to jump into the open dialogue. Thank you very much. Vosh and Sanvi, the floor is all yours. Of course. So we can take the irrelevant arguments off the table right off the bat. I don't think that being feminine makes you a woman or masculine a man. So the whole femboy tomboy thing doesn't mean anything to me. As for the pink blue brain argument, I also don't care about that. I don't care. A person can have the pinkest brain in the world and I can still call them a man and think of them as one. If they asked me to and vice versa. So, with regards to the other things, um, your truth and utility prescription argument is true in the sense that what is useful and what is true are not the same thing. Of course, the ultimate problem is that when it comes to language and definitions, we actually get to decide what's true. See, we're not doing math here. This isn't a 2 plus 2 equals 5 situation. Definitions can be expanded or contracted to include different understandings of how the world works. As our understandings grow, so do our definitions. This has been the case for basically every social construct we've ever had. Our understanding of what a biological female is, purely biological, not even social, has also adjusted with time. We're not simply looking at, for example, um, the, the presence of uh, genitalia, as we might have in the past. A deeper understanding of genetics and gametes are now available when it comes to making these decisions. So if one were to say then that a person who had not previously been considered a biological female now is due to a deeper understanding of genetics, this would not be a utility versus truth argument. We simply change what the truth is, adjust our definition, and get a better understanding of the world for it. I think there is utility in referring to trans men as men purely for harm reduction purposes, but I also think it's true. I think that, in fact, the reason there's utility in it is because it is true. The only thing that I care about is the argument from self-identification. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think it's circular. Turns out most definitions, if you get to the root of them, are pretty impossible to nail down, right? You've probably heard of or maybe even seen the Vsauce video, What is a Chair? Turns out nobody can define what a chair is. By nobody, I don't mean not just internet people or people who do the debate circuit. I mean nobody. Like, it's not possible to. Because our so, understanding of a chair is so socially constructed. It's a mm -hmm. matter of what's useful to us. Okay. So are you endorsing this self-identification view? I know you mentioned you don't see it as circular. Um, so a man could be somebody that identifies as a man? Of course. Okay. So I will address the argument from circularity first. So while it is true that at a certain point we run out of words to describe things, um, and this can be seen if you ask somebody, well, what does that mean? Well, what does that mean? Well, what does that mean? At a certain point we run out of words. Um, and when we do run out of words, what we do is we point to things within reality is we just start pointing to particulars and we try to derive a universal, like with triangles. And um, we start pointing to acute, obtuse triangles and trying to see what they have in common. That is how we um, take that idea. Now, the problem with saying a man is somebody who identifies as a man is that not only is it circular, it's viciously circular. Because if somebody were to ask you, Vosh, a man is somebody who identifies as a man, what is that? What is a man? I could point to myself. I'm a man. I could point to other men. There are billions of them. I could point to lots of them. I love pointing at men. Okay, so so if somebody asks you, what is a man? you I don't think you would need to point because you seem like we still have words left to give. So if they were to point to two men, like these are both man, what do they have in common? Would you do this with a chair? Um, I think we would do that with anything. That's how we come up with categories is that we look at what things have in common. But the, the chair argument, I would say, I've heard a lot of trans activists say, well, if you can't define chair, then we don't owe you a definition of man or woman. 
And the first thing I would contest with that is, well, you're the one that made a claim about men and women when I never made a claim about a chair. I never claimed a stool as a chair. I never claimed a bed as a chair. Yet trans activists do claim that trans men are men and trans women weren't. So when you do claim for the truth of something, you do need to define it. The second argument is that um, just because something like a chair doesn't really have something that we give um, thought to. If you're engaging in this debate, you're engaging in the gender discussion, I'm going to assume that people have We needn't thought give thought to the gender thing either. I don't think it's particularly important. But you're also making a claim. I could be out in the park. I could point at a bench or maybe a bit of a stone outcropping that I could sit uncomfortably and say, ah, a chair. You could insist rigorously that it is not a chair, that it is a bench or an outcropping or some other thing that is like but not like a chair. And we could have an argument on what a chair is. The only consequence of this would be the calories we burn by yelling at each other. It's a meaningless discussion because at the end of the day, a chair is just a general term we have to describe a thing we sit on. People's specific boundaries will expand or contract based on their preferences. It's like arguing whether or not a Pop-Tart is a sandwich. They're deliberately meaningless questions. This is why I do not like the circularity argument definition. In a purely like linguistic sense, at the root of all things, they're all circular. We generalize a concept, and the worth of a term is how specific an image we can evoke. What does it mean? How useful is it? But there's no truth value in any of these terms. We make the terms. If we want, we could split the term chair into well, 17 subjects. That's not necessarily subjects. true. Well, terms can have truth value. Like, for example, before humans um, came into existence, before homo sapiens came into existence, do you think gravity existed? Well, sure. Do you think the do you think gravity as a concept existed before the word gravity existed? Yes, we gave term to the concept. Yeah, so we just recognized that concept, some force among these large masses of objects, and we put a word to it. That's with any concept. But that's a concept so truth versus the is word recognized itself. And well, communicated, not created. But that's a truth value to a universal concept, not to the word. The word gravity, the truth, if one were to say, for example, no, gravity can refer to this, that, the other, but not to this particular phenomena. Actually, gravity doesn't specifically refer to the way, say, matter interacts with dark matter or the way light bends around black holes. We're going to reterm this. It'll be a different word. There would be no truth value in that because, again, we made the word gravity. The fundamental universal concepts remain the same. Biological sex remains the same. But experiential phenomena, the way we term and define things, we build those boundaries. And when it comes to, especially when it comes to something that's defined relationally, socially, like gender, there is no discovery of gender. Our understanding of it has changed enormously over time and between cultures even today. So the idea that we're discovering and giving name to some kind of fundamental truth is just not the case here. We're all winging it. And I don't think we should wing it in ways that are exclusionary or harmful. If we are having a discussion on an arbitrary concept, we should lean towards ones which give greater understanding and lesser harm. Yeah, so with the man is somebody who identifies as a man, lessening harm or whatnot, I would still argue that when you say a man is somebody who identifies as a man, or anytime anybody ever uses a word in the definition, it leads to an infinite regress. Whereas if we don't have words at all, like say we both couldn't speak or communicate, we would still have our senses to point to things. So that's discrete, right? At a certain point, all you can do is discreetly point to things. Whereas if you define a man as somebody who identifies as a man, who identifies as a man, who identifies as a man, it ends up being infinite. There's no way to ever come to a close. This there. doesn't mean anything. What does it mean to be cool? See, you what can find it? synonyms for what it means to be cool. You can find lots of them, in fact. But in reality, at the end of the day, we all learn what it means to be cool by being shown examples. And despite that, the examples we're shown are the highest level of arbitrariety. What was cool 50 years ago is not cool today. And what is cool now will not be cool 10 years from now. So we're talking about a concept, coolness, which everyone has some understanding of, which exists all over the world, which is fully social, and which can be referred to only through direct example. I don't like, see, there's the infinite regress thing. This is something that I did not learn from reading linguistics, but I did learn from the internet debate pro circuit. I think this is just a Weasley way of trying to apply to trans identification a greater standard for justification than exists for any other term or concept. Because I just don't think that we do this for other things. The infinite regress of coolness? Who cares, nerd? What's cool so is cool. Yeah. So uh, which, what other word besides man and woman do you define, use the word in the definition? Use the word in the definition? What do you mean? You said a man is somebody who identifies as a man, which uses the word man in the definition of man. So what other words besides man and women 
do we use to define themselves? We could just say like a man is somebody who identifies with the gender role associated with masculine behavior, but not exclusively. If you want to like avoid the word man, that is purely a semantic argument. Because okay, I can construct an infinite number of definitions for man that adhere to my understanding of what a man is without actually using the word man. That's just a word game. But if you talk about like how much are we actually advancing our understanding of the concept, well, whether or not you have synonyms, because cool has many synonyms, they're only synonyms. And a synonym does not give you an understanding of a word, right? Like you don't learn what cool is by learning what the term rad means. And because when you read the definition for rad, it's like, oh, rad, oh, that means that something's sick. Well, we're not learning anything. We're just finding extra words here. Would you say that something is cool if it identifies as cool? Um, if it's identified to be cool, then certainly. Identified or identifying? Well, something can't identify as cool because coolness is a concept, not a person. So it would have to be okay, identified so, from outside. Source. Yeah, I think that's this that comes into my other thing. Like, there's no feature of reality you obtain simply by identifying as having such. So I don't know why the same wouldn't be true uh, for man. But that's not the infinite regress argument. Now we're talking about whether or not self identification is a valid metric for social claims. But infinite regress is something that would apply to the term cool as well, because outside the description of synonyms, you kind of have to just point to real life examples. Well, is it cool to do this? Is so. it cool to do that? I think, I think um, we identify things as cool if we show some type of enthusiasm or friendliness towards it, towards the noun, then we call it cool. That's not what cool means, and you know it. I think that's like the literal definition. Being enthusiastic? Oh, so people yeah. can't I mean, be I nerdy? I mean, I can check really quick, but I think that's actually the definition. Wait, wait, from do, like you, wait do you think <laughs> that people use the term cool by looking up the definition of cool and going, oh, well, I mean, I can look really cool. I, yeah, really, well, really enthusiasm quick. <laughs> just means um, that cool it, it brings you some type definition. of like amazing sense. It doesn't have to be like enthusiasm in the way that you're describing it. When you describe something as cool, you just have a preference towards it. You like it. But liking something and it being cool are not even remotely the same thing. And anyone who uses the English language That's is why I defined it as having friendliness or enthusiasm towards a noun. That also isn't really how we use towards a noun what do you mean like noun is person place thing idea so like wait thinking that like liking a thing would mean that thing is cool yeah you could call it that absolutely um if you like a water bottle that water bottle is cool do you do you really think that's how pe like people's understanding of the term cool is just a synonym for when they like a thing I, I I didn't just say when they like a thing. I said when they show enthusiasm towards a noun. Show enthusiasm. Can you towards give a me noun. a Can sure. you give me a counterexample? Uh, sure, absolutely. We can acknowledge that things or people are cool despite not liking them, like the cool kids in school who we actually quite dislike because they're unapproachable and standoffish. We can say that things are cool even though it's an act and like the act is not something you personally enjoy. Like I think that skateboarding is cool and a kind of like post ironic like sunset overdrive wow look at how hard you're trying sort of way but i have no personal affinity for it and find skateboarders quite annoying actually what is or isn't cool is an incredibly see the interesting thing here and i think that anyone watching will understand mm -hmm. that when they think of the term cool it goes beyond you know liking a thing um is that by trying to concretely define coolness all you've done is robbed it of its coolness you've taken a worthwhile and useful English term, and you've crippled it in a, uh, in a, 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 an attempt to bring it in line with the absurd standards you hold for gender definitions. In reality, if you were to similarly cripple every word in the English language, we would all be dead men. There would be no Shakespeare. We would all be limping like zombies through the streets. The fact that these words are fluid, that they have meanings and definitions that we kind of pick up on and pull and twist and play with, that's not only English, that's literature. And to have all of that wiped aside and going, no, a man has to be, no, it can't be regressive. It has to have this specific definition. We don't, we don't apply these standards to anything outside of scientific technical definitions, like what grain of soil constitutes an acceptable range for like apartment construction, stuff that we decide the boundaries for. We don't do this narratively. Um, I would say like with cool, we don't define something that's cool if it's called cool. Now, to make the use mentioned distinction a little bit clearer, cool must refer to something, right? Maybe it's maybe it's not something we like. Maybe it's just something that we attribute to something other people like. Either way, notice how when I said that, I didn't use the word cool because using the word 
in the referent creates an uninformative definition. See, we're dead men right now. This is death. You're killing cool right now. It's a murder. And this is evidence for the police. No, no, <laughs> well, no. I, okay. no, I, no, I mean it. We can, I think we can, we can move off of it if you want. But like, no, but I, I mean it though. Like, I don't think you believe what you're saying, right? Because like here, you know what's cool in American culture? Black people. A-A-V-E, slang that black queer people come up with that gets taken by black women, that gets taken by white women, that gets taken by white gays, that gets brought into the general public. But American culture broadly doesn't find black people or black behavior cool. In fact, hegemonic American culture is mostly committed towards um, attacking black culture, ghetto culture, their fashion, their aesthetic, their way of speaking. And then 10 years later, everything they were doing becomes mainstream. So there's something countercultural about coolness. Something has to be brave, daring. It has to be evocative. It can't just be likable. Likeability, likeability is Mr. Rogers. But Mr. Okay, Rogers isn't fine. cool in the same it way. That, that's fine. Yeah, well, it still doesn't mean cool is something that identifies as cool, something that is said that is cool. Well, I'm only talking about the infinite regress argument, not the identification argument. That's a separate thing. Yeah, infinite regress comes with using the word in the referent. So a woman is somebody who identifies as a woman. A man is somebody who identifies as a man. Something that is cool is something that people is prescribe cool. to be cool. Something that's cool is something that's cool. I don't think you're going to find a better definition than that. And trust me, linguistics have tried. I mean, linguists have tried. You can find papers on this stuff. These are not ideas that can be baked into a single definition. You think that like murder could be called cool? Absolutely. Well, yeah, there are tons of go read history. There are some metal goddamn murders that have happened throughout history. Yeah, they killed Julius Caesar, 57 people stabbing him all at once. I don't know. That seems kind of cool and countercultural. Hell yeah. So I think maybe you f show enthusiasm towards that idea and concept, but many others don't. And that's the way we define it. But there are lots of things that I think are cool that I don't like, for example. The Hugo Boss Nazi uniforms are widely regarded as being fashionable in the whole like evil Sith, dark empire, black leather kind of thing. I don't find Nazis even remotely cool. If anything, that's more like a uh, cosplay. That's LARPing is cool. That's like, uh, how do we make our horrible death soldiers look cool? But an effort was made, right? There's a reason they paid out for those leather uniforms. Yeah, so back to kind of what I was saying, though, would you say that like the definition of man, when you say a man is somebody who identifies as a man, and if you were to ask you what a man is, would you be able to like give us any type of any type of thing? Well, I could point to myself. I'm a man. How do you know? Because I identify as one, of course. So you know that people are men and women based off that they tell you that they're a man or woman? How else would you know what's going on in their brain? I have to use the so, same mode of inference to ask lots of things about a person. So um, take something like... You could tell I'm a biological take, male by looking take, at me. Take um, somebody that doesn't speak English, for example. If they don't I say the words, I am a man, how do you know that they're a man? Because one implication of this definition of this, a man is somebody who identifies as a man, is that manhood is confined to English speakers. There are no non-English speaking men. Of course, they're non English speaking men. We have. But they don't identify as men. Yes, but they have analogous understandings of gender, considering that we have man as a gender to just be the collection of social roles and expectations associated See, there's with the the non, male sex. There's the non circular definition a collection of roles and things that we associate with the male sex. Well, that sure. That's, the well, the, no, well, that's just what it is we understand a man to be, but you don't have to adhere to those roles to be a man. And in fact, we don't. There are plenty of like metrosexual or effeminate men who we consider to be part of the social category of men, despite, I don't know, doing their fancy pants makeup stuff or whatever right. it is. So like that doing. definition fails. How does that definition fail? Because then you commit a special pleading fallacy. If you say that a man is somebody who encompasses these traits that we typically associate with males, but then you say, I didn't oh, say that. Also... Oh, I thought, excuse me, I thought you said that they encompass these roles or whatnot. No, it's associated with those roles, but they don't have to encompass them. There are femboys and tomboys, right? Like there are plenty so what of was people. Your have... What was your referent for when you refer to men? What are you referring to? I think that when man as a gender category, as something that we understand or have built for people to identify with or not identify with, is just the roles and expectations associated with the male sex. That's not a universal yeah, that's what thing. I said. Well, no, but that's just a set of associations. You can choose whether or not you want to be a part of that group. Yeah, so what makes you a man? Identifying as part of that group. Part of what group? The one that I just described. The, the, gender. the social role thing? Right. If man is a collection of roles and expectations associated with the male sex, 
It's like a filter through which you view a person. It's a lens of analysis. It's a decision to identify as one because well, it gives you a perspective. Well, that's kind of what I said, right? I said, in your view, a man is somebody who identifies or maybe encompasses the social roles we typically associate with males. Is that not correct? I think you identify with a set of roles and expectations, but that doesn't mean okay. you adhere to them. For example, yeah, that's I, fine. That's fine. I, right. I can accept. Okay. Yeah, totally yeah. Yeah. So, so under this view, it's still false that trans men are men because there's plenty of trans men who do not identify with the social roles and expectations typically associated with males. No, they do by identifying as men. That's that's circular. No, so we've already done the okay, circular. Okay, because you said thing. a man is somebody who I. No, okay, the man, man is just the collection of. Okay, it's like okay, it's like being an American. All right, so I'm an American in a purely national sense. I was born here. But when we say, is this person an American, we mean more than just what is their nationality. Often American, it's like a melting pot spirit kind of thing. You know, are you really an American? But what does that mean? Well, what does it mean to be an American? It turns out no one human can meet every category for what it means to be an American because there are so many Americas. People in the South, the Northeast, the Northwest, the Southwest, the Center, the Rust Belt, they're all going to have different ideas of what it means to be an American. So when a person says like, yeah, I'm an American, even though they're say like a two-year immigrant or something, not even a citizen, I'll listen to them. But for me, it's more of a general spirit thing. They're saying I'm an American because they, they want to be a part of that category, not because they want to adhere to every individual expectation within the category, because that's not possible. Okay. So that, that's a little bit off topic. But like when you say a man, a man is somebody who identifies as a man. And then I ask you, well, what is a man? Since you used it in the referent, you say a man is somebody who encompasses or identifies with, I guess identifies with is better if I understood, identifies with um, the social roles and expectations we typically associate with males, right? Is that a fair characterization? I think that man, like American, is a social block. It's a big, heavy gravitational force that you can enter the orbit of if you choose to. I think that there are a lot of things that you might do or see or want to be in that orbit that you might may or may not identify with that you may consider to be a part of your experience, but it's something you're in the orbit of and you can choose to break that orbit. With an American, I consider myself an American because there are some categories that I adhere to, some beliefs that I have that I consider fundamentally American, but not all. And as for men, right, mm -hmm. there are like, I don't like wearing cowboy hats, but I swear to God, you go to a third of the men in the south of this country and they'll tell you that owning a cowboy hat is a fundamental part of being a man. You ever seen those memes of like the, you know, the like um, big saddle, no ox or whatever? You like those southern are is your boyfriend a woman memes where like, you know, if your boyfriend goes down to the range and he brings a 22, <laughs> it looks like you've got a girlfriend, miss like that kind of shit. Obviously, that's not the kind of vibe I'm going for, but you know, it is the same gravitational force. I still feel like we're not getting a clear answer though. Because... You, oh, you never will. No, that's your problem. You're trying to get a clear answer on a social construct. You can't, nobody can do that. When you refer to men, what are you referring to? I'm referring to the people who make the decision to orbit around that idea, that concept, to be a okay. part of that, um, that block. Okay, so people that make that choose to orbit around this concept, and if I understand correctly, this concept is what we typically associate with males in terms of roles and expectations. Though people obviously, um, you know, break with those traditions quite a bit while still being men. You know, yeah. like David and Bowie. Under this view, yeah. not all trans men are men because a lot of trans men don't identify with those expectations. You only and they have don't to... be in this orbit, as you would put it. Well, you only have to identify as being a man identifying as a man is and being that's in what that I'm orbit. saying. then you're shifting between the two definitions no, no, which no. one it can be hold on it can be either or but it cannot be like both okay so like would you say that a man is somebody who identifies as a man or would you say a man is somebody who wants to orbit around these social roles I, those are the same thing those are not the same thing because people can identify as men but not want to orbit around these no, social but roles. Orbiting fact, around, but like like I said, I am a man, but I don't adhere to every social role expected of men. It's not even possible for me to. Yeah, but you you orbit. And some people don't even want to no, orbit. But no, but so by orbiting, I mean like you are when you say I'm a man, you're choosing to enter that orbit. This is the collection of roles and expectations that you want to define your experience around. I disagree. Plenty Being, of people that identify as men or hell, even people that identify as women do not want to orbit around these traits associated with um, their preferred sex. No, no, no. By orbit around, I mean that it's the framework through which you want to engage with and even defy these traits. So to give you an example, okay? Being willful, being um, argumentative or stubborn, 
means different things when you're a man and a woman. I can be argumentative and stubborn with very few social consequences. Women can't, and throughout history, it's been worse for them in this regard. Now, there are plenty of argumentative and stubborn women, willful women, hysterical women, whatever. They've made a lot of history. That's great for them. Um, but if you were to take in just this one sliver, this facet of what it means to be a man or a woman, you can be a woman and be willful and then your willfulness, even though it is not a feminine trait in the socially expectant sense, is now understood differently because you're a woman. A person can be a man, say a femboy, and be very feminine. But femininity is different when you identify as a man than as when you identify as a woman. The roles and expectations are differently. A good example would be women's femininity, while often sexualized, is not innately sexual, right? Like a woman can be feminine and present as such and be treated normally, but not as often as they would like to be, but it's p possible. Femboys, on the other hand, that's practically a porn term. That's like a category on hentai sites because femininity, when projected from someone who identifies as a man, very different, but that's different from trans women. Trans women, if you were going by a biological essentialist argument, aren't that different from femboys, and obviously the porn sites conflate the two, but that's their problem, not mine. But the expectations between the two are very different because there's something about being feminine while being a man that confers a certain set of expectations. So what okay, I mean so to say by all of this agree is- that there are different expectations associated with um, people who feel that they're female versus people that feel that they're male. I can agree to that. That still makes it false that all trans men are men under this account because plenty of trans men, just by calling themselves men, they do not want to adhere to these um, traits and expectations we have typically associated. They don't have with to men. adhere, but they're in the orbit. And, and, and they don't identify with them and they don't want to orbit with them. So under your view, not all trans men are men. They are orbiting with them because they're engaging with the context by which they'll be judged in relation to those expectations. Even if they openly say, I do not want anything to do with this, I do not identify with this. I do not like this. Nothing to do with it. Then by your logic, unless they're lying and misguided, they would have to be not a man. No, they adopt the orbit and then they reject the characteristics. Same as me. I am an American. I accept that term and everything that it implies, but I fervently reject elements of what it means to be an American. I will say I'm an American, but I want nothing to do with, and then I complain about a bunch of stuff like a communist okay, would. Yeah. So when you say adopt the orbit, you mean just by calling themselves a man, they have agreed to be associated with all of these different things. It's like an analytical framework. We yes, we can sure. we can remove ourselves from it entirely being non-binary. But um, if you are to be a man or a woman, if you say I am this or that, you are entering yourself and you might not like all of it, but that is what it means to call yourself a woman. If a trans woman calls themselves a woman or a trans man a man, they know what they're signing up for. There will be expectations placed on them that are new and scary and often unwelcome. But a lot of them don't associate their manhood with those expectations. They may call themselves men for different reasons, but do not orbit around identify with those types of things. So under this view, it's still false and not all. And I don't like I don't like cowboy hats, and yet I'm an American man, so I reject those categories, those I expectations. Even know that was thing, but... Cowboy hats are both American and male. Okay, uh, so when you're okay, let's just engage with this. When you say you're an American, what what does that mean to you? That's a complicated question. I like the theoretical values uh, associated with this country's identity as a melting pot. They're not true values, but I like the theoretical values, okay. and I have a strong cultural tie to a lot of the stuff this country has to offer. Okay, so you like these um, values of like a melting pot. You like these cultural identities that the country has to offer, but some can of people them. and I do some, hate America, some of them, of whichever ones you like. Um, but can people be Americans without liking those things? Of course. Perfect. Then when you refer to an American, you are not referring to people who want the melting pot or et cetera, et cetera. You're referring to something else, and that's the same problem we're having in this. I'm referring debate. to a vibe. A vibe. That's absolutely what it means to be an American. Yeah. Is that what you're saying for manhood too, though? Well, yeah, it's a social category. A vibe is about as close of a term you're going to get in terms of synonyms. It's a analytical framework. It's a set of a expectations. Vibe. It's a, um, a a lens you view the world through, a color. It's a it's a it's something that tints, it shapes, it shades. And you can choose to look at things differently once you're there. But yeah, I really do think that's what it means. I think that's what you do as well, by the way. I think that you may take your womanhood for granted, as I take my manhood for granted, because I was born into it. I didn't have to fight for it. But I think that when I think of myself as a guy and you as a woman, I presume, I can't see your brain state, um, we want some things associated with what it means to be a man and woman, respectively, and we don't want other things. But what we want 
on the whole, as an aggregate, is to be understood in the context of man or womanhood. And I think that we make that choice too. What does what is the vibe of manhood that all trans men associate themselves with? Well, all trans men associate themselves with being a man. The vibe is a which is what complicated and well, it's the set of expectations, roles, and associations with the male sex. But that's sex, false because not all trans men identify with those set of roles, expectations associated with the male sex. But they identify with being men, which means that that and is that the you framework. Can, and this is a problem. Those are things are not mostly mutually exclusive. You can identify as a man, and you can also not identify with um, the social roles and expectations associated. But we with can males. do that with America. But and that's the confusion we're having because you we think can, those we can things do that go with hand American, in hand though. when they don't. Can't we, can we not do that with American? There are plenty of ways in which I reject uh, uh, American behavior and American um, social expectations. And yet, in spite of that, I consider myself an American. There's no single uh, definitional point I could like gesture at to prove whether or not I'm an American in a social or cultural sense, right? What does it mean to say be culturally American? What does it mean to be culturally white or black? Mixed race people struggle with this. Um, the answer is that there is no answer. There are expectations and roles. A person who is half white and half black, or maybe a quarter black, three quarters white because of skin tones and pigmentation and the one drop rule that people still adhere to for some reason. Uh, we should not have racial expectations though, just to clarify. Oh, I agree. I don't think we should have sexual expectations either. Do you think we should have gendered expectations? I don't think we should have any kind of expectation for any of these things. Is like, would you define race based on the expectations of the races? Well, well yeah, we already do. Um, white Latin people, for example, uh, depending on how dark your skin tone is or whether or not you speak with an accent, there are plenty of Latin people and even like black people, descendants wise, who are white passing. Kamala Harris uh, is um, like, what, half black, half Indian or something? Yes. Yeah, but she gets treated black. Obama gets treated black. But I grew up around Latin people who spoke Spanish with an like with a thick accent. They spoke English, but they were white, like skin tone wise. So they get treated white. But obviously, our definition yes. of race is how are you relating limited. this to man? Just curious. In the sense that all of it's complete bullshit. There are expectations we have for what it means to be this, that, the other. I really don't think we're doing anything other than a framework by which we're meant to be understood, even if that understanding is in service of rejecting everything associated with it. I think that a trans man can identify as a man and then reject everything about manhood and have fat titties. God bless and them. That's God a be contradiction willing. from your reference. No, no, you not at all. It's it based. is 100%. It's based. Like, we, like even just deductively, if we were to walk through this in a syllogistic format, it would result in a special pleading fallacy because you said a man is someone who identifies as a man. Then I was like, oh, well, what is a man? And then you were like somebody who identifies with these social characteristics that we associate with males. No, no, no. But Only identifies with being man. The characteristics themselves don't have to be identified. you did say that second with. part. They identify with the broader group, the categorization, but not the individual characteristics. They could reject That's what everything I said, about the social, it. like oh, yeah, the broad, social, yes, the broad it's, thing. So, it's not individual if it's social, um, but yeah. So they identify with the social um, traits that we associate with males, right? But I think it is false. It is notably false that just because you identify with them as a man, you identify with these social characteristics of a male. Okay, let me give you an example here. Okay. So I consider myself an American. Now, let's say I had a time machine. I traveled back to um, 1804 in America, right? And uh, I, I, I step out of the time machine, okay? I step into, say, uh, I don't know, some southern state. I have a, a backpack full of ammunition and weapons that won't be invented for 200 years. And I have a Judge Dredd rut of a time across the South, okay? I'm, I'm imitating Sherman. I'm having a grand old time. I'm John Browning my way through the countryside screaming about how I'm an American, this, that, the other. Now, in the time period that I'm in right there, and honest to God, in most of the South today, all the traits that I consider being American have nothing to do with what they understand as being American. Initially, the founding fathers were so racist, they thought that Germans were too swarthy for the Anglo characteristic of the colonies. So a characteristic, like a, a, a role, a trait, I'm an American, that's something that I ascribe to myself, but at the same time, I could exist in a context where I reject basically everything associated with that trait, with that role, for the same reason that there are women, even cisgender women, who have historically rejected everything about it. Joan of Arc, or I don't know, Mulan allegories. And what makes them history. women? Because they identify as it. 
Okay, so the problem with this circularity again, if I were to tell you a blarg is somebody who identifies as a blarg, can you tell me what that is? I wouldn't, why, why would I have to tell you what that is? You just told me the so, term. Okay, or if I were to say this, on your screen right now, as far as I can see, there is a blarg. Can you point to it? You made the term. How would I be able to point to it? No, I defined it for you. I said a blarg is something that's a blarg. Okay, so who so what here is a blarg? Oh, I just defined it. So again, a man, or, or, or is there a, man, a problem a with man, regular definitions? So, so what you just said was really dumb. A man is Fine. someone who identifies a man. I'm a man. Now point to the man on your screen. Okay, now that, that wasn't my question though. On it's your not screen, that hard, right? Because I've done two things. Somewhere, I constructed a screen. definition and then I pointed to who, what a representation of that is. Okay, so in order to create a definition, all you have to do is make it circular and then point to an example of it. But the problem with that is we don't know what you, it is. You can literally, you can literally do that. Um, we, we create new words all the time doing exactly this. Oh, this is such a vibe. What's a vibe? This is a vibe. Oh, hey, I've now decided. Here's a new term. Do doubles. A double is like when it's like this. It's like like these kind of things, you know, like this kind of stuff. Well, there you go. We do we we do. This is language. We do this literally all the time. I'm not like this sounds facetious, but like we do this constantly. New uh, uh, music um, genres are invented like this nonstop. Uh, Hold on. Yeah. Words the, get codified. Is, if I if I were to say a blog is somebody who identifies as a blog, then I pointed at myself and James and I said, we're both blogs. Can you tell me what it is now? Why would I need to know what it is? Someone who well, identifies it. Based on the information that I gave you, can you tell me what that word refers to? You. Me and James. What you're we're arguing. Insane. What you're wait, arguing. What? So wait, wait this is what just you're crazy. arguing. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, you're, mi you're mixing two things up. You're mixing. An example you're mixing. The actual referring of the you're word. Mixing, like, this you're mixing. You're mixing two things up. 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 You're there's nothing wrong with what just happened. You said a blarg is when someone identifies as one. I identify as a blarg. I now know everything I need to. You're a blarg. That's it. That literally, there's literally nothing wrong. There's no problem with circularity. Um, language exists this way. This is normal. The question is, well, the is this is definition useful? Right. You're talking about utility. And hey, I agree. I'm a gender abolitionist. I don't give a shit about gender. So if we could just get rid of all of this and not bother with it, that would be phenomenal. But in the meantime, as long as we have a bunch of arbitrary associations around like what it means to be a man or a woman, a bunch of widely held expectations, mind you, about what it means to be a man or a woman, then uh, people are going to have preferences for which group they want to associate with. Wait, and as long is, as they want that, I'm fine with aren't it. Men, then. If the word has no meaning, then trans men aren't men. The same way I can't say a water and you bottle aren't a woman. A... Wait, hold on. The same way I can't say that a water bottle is a blarg because we don't really know what a blarg is. A blarg has you no meaning. You can say that. So... Hold on, wait. Then we would need to know what it means. You don't know. No, 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 no. You don't have. No, you just yes, said it. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because, for example, me, James, water bottle. These things are all blargs. What is the property that they have in common? I don't know. Why? I don't care. Wait, why? Okay, and that's things the that same problem wait, with the definition that share, of man. Wait, no. Again, you're attacking utility. First of all, things that all belong to a group or to a term don't have to have no, a it's shared not utility. characteristic. Uninformative has to refer to that's utility it's like you're fallacy. describing it's a fallacy no you, no, no no it's no it's not about don't misuse the term fallacy no it there, is no no no, no example, please please no 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 stop is. wait stop it please is. wait no 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 listen what you're just describing right now are useless terms you're describing terms that don't provide meaning they don't elucidate they don't give you understanding that's fine there are lots of words like that if your that's problem, what a contradiction is no no like, no no can no, you, no, wait, no, no, no 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 please please that's please no is. you need to understand this if you ever because you're going to be showing this powerpoint off to like 70 more people and they're all going to tell you this and you need to learn now okay language does not mm -hmm. give you a right to utility usefulness consistency broadly shared terms between things within the same definition, language guarantees none of these things. I don't know why, I don't know where this misunderstanding of linguistics came from. If you want, you can read like the big theorists and understand that they're basically throwing their arms up in the air going, we have no clue how language works. None of this works this way. Like you have to read Wittgenstein or something. Um, the idea of like, well, it's a fallacy to have a term that refers to a thing when you don't know that. No, it's not. That's not what a fallacy okay. means. A fallacy can is a- Can I give you an example? Wait, no, a fallacy is a logical contradiction. When you say, a blarg is this, these are blargs, and leave it at that, you have not constructed a logical contradiction. You have actually created a perfectly consistent Wait, and self-contained bubble though? of information. It's just useless info. 
if I, can I be so, so if we had a squared circle, can you envision a squared circle? Uh, so again, square and circle have mutually exclusive. Well, first of all, you can round Correct. the edges. It's of a, a square. contradiction. Something can't be both square and both circle at the same time because it violates the logical law of non-contradiction. Well, that would that would really that, depend. If I were to tell somebody, if I were to tell somebody, envision a squared circle, they would always never be able to do it because it's a contradiction, Hold right? On. And that is what renders that uninformative. You're and incorrect. That is why we have the fallacy I have, of non-contradiction. I have I have Googled squared circle and found multiple definitions. It can refer to a boxing ring. You can have a circle enclosed with that's a not what i'm referring to you a... could have asked for clarification oh well that's interesting it's almost like language is an Can imperfect envision... way of referring to real world ideas and your attempts to try to apply a kind of failed logical consistency onto these arbitrary social categories is kind of stupid and self-defeating you can have a squared circle. I'm envisioning it now. You can't see my mind because, you know, it's beautiful. Okay, you can here. draw it, but can you envision a shape that has four equal 90 degree angle sides square mm -hmm. and also simultaneously is a round plane um, with a 360 degree angle? Like that is not possible because it, it violates the law of non-contradiction. They have Those mutually exclusive things. definitions. Correct. They have mutually exclusive definitions. So if I were to tell somebody and gave them that background, envision a square circle, they'd never be able to do it. It's uninformative. Of, so, so of what does that the have same to do? Applies, wait, the so, same applies, but we're wait, talking the about same would language. apply to man. The same applies to man. If you oh. say a man, somebody who identifies as a man, um, and I say, what's that? And if somebody who identifies as a man, social stuff doesn't have to work. So identifies as a man, then it would be the same with the oh, Blark example I gave. No, wait, hold on. You have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so let me explain this to you. When we talk about a square and a circle having mutually contradictory definitions, the reason for that is because we are assuming that the definition for both of those things adheres to the mathematical description of a square and a circle. Both of these terms have mathematical descriptions. If you were to twist those definitions, then you could create a squared circle with any set of categories, characteristics, or non-literal meanings. But again, we're referring to physical mathematical constructions. To try to ascribe the law of non-contradiction as applied in this case to social categories betrays and just I'm not going I like I'm not going to dust Logic around it. Logic is universally you, you, applied. No, 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 no. You don't understand what a social category is. You were unable Logic to. Logic is universally you were, applied. No, 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 it's no. Stop, stop. It's no, science. this is like 101 stuff. This is like an economist talking about yeah. like supply and demand. I, I don't know. Like the lines. first thing I hear every time I take please, a philosophy me, class please, is I'm that Logic is universal. You. No, no, no. Stop. Logic is universal, but the logic of social constructs and def concretely defined mathematical categories are different. This is the reason why nobody has a definition for what it means to be black. You can look if you want, by the way. There are philosophers, anthropologists, sociologists, and biologists who have all gotten on the case. There's no answer to it. We also don't have an answer for what it means exactly to be biologically male or female, because there are exceptions in intersex people where the gametes may uh, be in an interstitial point where it's impossible to concretely determine this. In reality, outside of the abstract definitions of mathematics, everything and all logic is conditional to our circumstantial analysis of the situation. That's just how life is, especially with language where we make the words. None of this you, has anything to do with the definition of man. You propose mutually contradictory concepts. So no, I have not. One, you just haven't understood man, the okay, concept. A man is somebody who identifies as a man, and then a man is somebody who um, identifies with the social role we typically associate with males. These two don't be, have to be at the same a time. a man is being the uh, uh looking at the world and being viewed through a given framework associated with those roles and expectations okay but now you're changing it do you understand that no you had never i've, about I've said this no i've said right this now. about a dozen times so i'm going to say it one more time there are roles and expectations we associate with being a man they change mm -hmm. from culture to culture time period to time period that is what we think of as a man in a social sense we have strong understandings of this by the way short hair, lack of piercing, type of clothing, how you act, how you treat people. These are social things, not biological, but we believe them strongly nonetheless. And they're different here than they are in Saudi Arabia, India, and Russia, or all over the world. And when a person identifies as a man, or is told they're a man and just goes along with it, as many people do, most people are cisgender, that's because they choose to, or simply are, engaging with that perspective. Imagine it as like, um, I, I'm trying to like boil this down to the most like Reddit brain thing that I can, like a class in an RPG or something, right? A class in an open-ended RPG. We're playing, we're we're playing that one game that's Diablo, but not. What is it called? Um, Path of Exile. Okay, everyone gets the same skill tree. Okay, anyone can build into anything. All right, 
However, you're choosing to engage with the world from the framework of the class that you got into from the get-go. There are sets and frameworks and decisions, like being an American, right? Like, I'm an American, but what does that mean? I don't know. Nobody knows what it means to be an American in a social sense, but that doesn't mean that it's useless to think of people as Americans, because people might have different meanings, different understandings. And that's why this isn't useless. We do have preconceptions of what it means to be a man. Different ones, contradictory ones, but they still exist. And when a person says, I identify as a man- Do you think we man, should adopt contradictions? Logic, if we can, you know, agree it's a logical contradiction, do you think it can be no, a no, contradiction? It's not a logical contradiction. It is a- You just said contradiction. No, no, okay, no, no, see, this is your problem. <laughs> You're trying to apply a 101 understanding of logic. This is a contradiction in definition, which is not a logical which is contradiction. Which is a reference. No, okay, no, 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 on, no, 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 please, example. wait, oh, do you, are oh, you aware? Like wait, hold, no, 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 stop. Are you aware of the fact that different cultures have contradictory definitions of what it means to be a man in terms of like socially, like, are you a man? Like that kind of thing. People refer to different things, but when I'm saying, for example, I will say, when I refer to a triangle, I'm referring to a this, um, three-sided- We're talking about social constructs, not dis distinct mathematical abstract concepts. What, what is a social construct? I really wish you would have Googled that before talking to me. I really think I understand how most people use the term, but I want clarification because as far as I'm concerned, under your um, framework, every single word is socially constructed, is it not? Yes. Literally Perfect. every now let word. Me, now let me continue. Did but we not invent concepts, the word triangle? No. The concept of a triangle is not socially constructed. The term we created for it Perfect. is. The concept of a man is not socially constructed. The term is. Now no, define what that concept no, is. No, incorrect. That's what a social construct is. A triangle is not a social construct. Our understanding of it is, and certainly the word for it. A man is a social construct, and the word we've constructed for it is as well. That's the difference between a social well, construct. So you didn't answer what a social construct was in the way you're no, using it. No, but you don't even know what they are. Listen, a triangle, the concept, the mathematical concept of a, of a three-sided, three-angled uh, polygon or whatever, uh, not a polygon, a shape, um, that is a, 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 it is an abstract thing that exists in the ether that we pluck from the universe and we give a word to. The word triangle has not always had the same definition and doesn't currently. There are multiple social definitions for the word triangle that don't actually refer to a mathematical property. You could like, there are words for triangle that are direct translations from other languages that refer to like a menage a trois or like a three-way or something like that. These... What is the social, con the distinction again? Like what's the social construct that man can't be something that's identified within reality? A social construct is a concept that we have defined socially, but is not emergent from the universe. It is something that we have built. It is something that understandings of has shifted because they are a product of our mind and our perception. Everything, well, not everything, but most everything we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is to some extent a social construct. And the question is, to what extent do we like, is empirical engagement like valuable here? We used to think empirical engagement was very valuable when it came to race. Uh, this was the like phrenology skull measuring whole business, right? Well, we know that race exists in a social construct, but social constructs aren't necessarily uh, completely detached from, say, innate mathematical properties. So let's analyze these skull shapes. Scientific racism had a good heyday for about 150 years, but at the end of it now with our current understanding, it seems like race was, yeah, pretty much just a social construct. It wasn't okay. actually tied that much to a mathematical understanding of what it means to be white or black. Okay, so when we when you say a social construct, if I understood correctly, um, it's a concept that we define socially that is not emergent from the universe. Yeah, like we don't pluck the definition or the understanding of this thing from some kind of abstract so thing. So then, th then this gets into this problem. Do you think that men and women existed before um, Homo sapiens developed complex language? The social construct of what it means to be a man or a woman in a gendered sense? No, of course not. So there were no men and women prior to uh, the Western linguistic development? Wait, but before the word man and woman? 
Yeah. Were there men and women before the word band? Yeah, there have been analogous terms to those in previous languages. Okay, and the, so uh, then it seems that they are emergent still from no, reality. No, no, that's not. Wait, no, that's not emergent from the universe. That's different languages giving different terms to the same fundamental, like, part of human what existence. What does emergent from, the, are humans not emergent from the universe? Oh, like, oh, God, no. Do you understand no? the difference between a triangle, something that you can arrive at from first principles, and what it means to be a man, something that you arrive at through observation and explanation. I think all concepts are that which exist within reality okay, and the so universe. What so you're, can you, can you're you define engaging in, okay, wait, so, hold on. How wait, is, wait, wait, how wait, is wait, a man wait, how I, I, is a human man not emergent from the universe? So what you're doing here is called scientific positivism. That's something you should write down to look up in the future. There was a philosophical movement about 200 or so years ago, um, that's mostly died down, that was under the impression that the laws and principles of scientific analysis were capable of solving all human problems because everything we are and everything we do adheres ultimately to scientific principles. They were wrong. They were actually deeply racist lunatics who believed that all of their pre-existing social biases were just them understanding the material thread of reality. Um, in reality, most social stuff is done through social work. Sociology, anthropology, history, interpretation, analysis, economics, political theory. The idea that, say, for example, communism is plucked from the threads of the universe, simply not true. It's a product of human understanding, a subjective, partial, and often shifting... Is human shifting... understanding within the universe? Wait, I didn't is say... Wait, everything... Wait, wait, wait. Everything is, is within the universe. The question is... It, is... Did it emerge from the universe? From first principles? Something like so you're misunderstanding like these terms. No, Our I'm not. We don't what, understand do you what want to clarify them? What do you mean what? when you say emerged from the universe? As far as I'm concerned, everything emerged from the universe. Okay. If something's definition is self-evidently a product of the systems that have been used to construct it, that is to say like a triangle, like mathematical and scientific theories like gravity, like our understanding of atomic structures and molecular structures. These things are to some extent subject to our social interpretation, but we're mostly just observing and giving names to the universe. With things like what a man is, we made that. What a man is would die with our species, a triangle would not. There are plenty of things that we take for granted in the day to day that if the earth was annihilated in a nuclear hellfire okay. would not reemerge. The triangle okay, so, would. Okay, I actually, so um, the concept of man, if humans were to go extinct, extinct, that would die. But this gets into the implication of like, do you think the word um, human or homo sapien is a social construct too? Yeah, yeah. Our difference in species uh, differentiation. Taxonomy. Is one yeah, that is 100% socially determined. There are literally arguments within the field of taxonomy or taxonomy whether or not like two species should be considered the same or not. Like this is ongoing debate. I'm sure yeah, that these I lines mean, will change that, all the but time. Clearly, it's not a social construct. It's very a scientist. No, it's li no, no, no. It's universals. literally a social construct where they're arguing over whether or not it would be more or less useful to us socially to separate these uh, definitions. It is literally a social construct. Okay, so when you say like a man is a social construct, what do you mean by that? I mean that these are things, we made it. We're not pulling this from the universe. We're not arriving at it from first principles. We get to choose what it is. We choose the terms. Taxonomists get to decide whether or not a red flying squirrel and a beige flying squirrel are the same species. And we get to decide what a man is. These terms, there's no harm in making a wrong decision. You can't make a wrong decision. What a man is is different here than it is in Mexico. I mean, that's just south of the border, right? But they're what not about male? wrong. Hmm? Male. Do you think male is socially constructed? Yeah, of course. Like I said, we don't actually know. Male, not man. M-A-L-E. Yeah, we don't actually know where the exact line is because there's not really a way to know. It's kind of a spectrum. Interesting. There's an American so before, scientific article that discusses this. Before humans came into existence, were there males and females? Um, the spectrum exists for mammals and most living things and in some manner. And it's not a social conscience. No, you, no, the terms we've given are, though. All so, words are socially constructed. Yes. It's not, 
that's not how you're using social so if you're if you're asking is there like uh an objective biological like male or female gametes even that varies species to species so you could argue that's not a social construct in a human sure, sense but, but rather males a product and females of exist whatever however you may determine that before we had the word male and female did males and females exist? In, in terms of like the this the inseminator and the inseminatee like this this process this biological archetype existed before we gave term to it absolutely okay so then it's not a social contract it's a concept we identify okay but whether or not where we draw the line between male and female is because throughout all of like the existence of species on this planet there have also been genetic anomalies that do not concretely fit within the male female dichotomy this continues with our species today so while the uh process of reproduction through male female mammalian whatever right um, that's been going on for a long time to look at that and go, ah, yes, there are two decree distinct like categories. That's an us thing. That's an, our brain thing. That's not a universe thing. We did that. Yeah. So I'd say we make the words to refer to the phenomena, right? So we made the word male to refer to something. And here we're talking about man to refer to some phenomena. So we when put we boxes say on the real world. We create the categories and categories are definitionally um, social constructs. A thing may exist in reality, but our, our going over to a go, this is yeah, this and this is that. I think we agree here because we both agree gravity existed before the word gravity existed. Yeah, of course. But that's a yeah. universal. So it's field. something like that. Right. So like with the term um, man, when we say man, we what phenomena are we referring to? Well, we're referring to a social phenomenon of of the traits roles and expectations that we generally associate with the identity associated with all of those traits roles and expectations um but that's not correct that's, because you still would refer to people as men as you've said to me if they don't identify with those things no no the identity they identify with the identity the identity is constructed and socialized around all of these traits yeah plenty of trans men don't identify with the identity no, of male typical of, traits of no 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 of male no you keep this is it's like 50 times i keep saying this the only thing that you're identifying with is being a man being a man is this orbit, this framework, this construct. You can reject every single individual characteristic associated with being a man and still be one. There are okay. cisgender women who have made an effort to but reject then you every the single. Word... Are you familiar with like the use mentioned distinction? Yes. Okay, so you're mentioning the word man, correct? Not using it. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm in this context. I think I'm doing both. What? What? What contradiction do you think there is? Because um, if you said that somebody can reject every um, referent for man, but still be a man, it was, just seems that a man is somebody who identifies as a man means a man is somebody who identifies with the word man. Uh, well, yeah, in the English language, sure. Okay, so if a man is somebody who identifies as the word man, then it, you still run into the problem of the only men are English speaking men. Well, then there would be right. And whatever the Spanish word for man is, I could only guess at mano. Uh, then there you go. They they have the oh, wait, mono category. Okay, so if we have a hermano is someone who identifies as a hermano and a man is somebody who identifies as a man, you do realize that would make the English speaker not a hermano because they don't identify with that word and that would make the Spanish speaker not a, a man because they don't identify with that wait, word. We already have that. Um, Under the use mentioned. Decision. Yeah, we already have that. The definition for what it means to be a yeah, woman. So then wait, no, 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 wait, wait. This, wait, this isn't even a trans thing is the thing. Um, what it means to be like a good woman has varied through Christendom to Islam to like modern day America to India to like, so like if, if a person was like a woman in like a social sense in America in the 1920s, the clothing she wore, the way she talked, the way she acted, whatever. And then she went over to say, I don't know, like Afghanistan, she would not be considered a woman in a social sense. She would be considered like a Western woman. She would be recognized as biologically female, Okay, but I the idea of like, oh, now she like the idea of these like social roles being culturally um identical across borders that's the whole point like that's why these are social constructs and you yeah. have to concede that there are no non-english speaking men um well we would call them men in the same way we do with okay so what you're doing okay, right okay, hold on. No, 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 okay, no 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 wait wait i can't let you get away with that okay that is true in the case of like every word so for example russians don't have the word soldier they have a different word. So technically, there are no Russian soldiers, except we're not idiots. So the Russian word for soldier 
whatever it is, you know, they're like, oh, they have those. Okay, so let's not be stupid and understand that's a soldier. What like this is what I meant at the very beginning with talking about chair and American things you were never able to provide a contrary example to the like stick up your ass you have for trans identification would fuck over all language. You would destroy you're killing language. You're murdering it right now. And like, no. no, 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 genuinely, like your lack of understanding of the way language functions, the ambiguity of language, you de you defined cool as thing you like when it's a noun. You would kill, you would take the American literary classics and you would choke them to death in their sleep. The, no language could survive. Your drive to exclude trans men has a casualty count beyond what you could imagine. If you were reshaping the universe, to exclude them in the fashion you chose to, for no reason, by the way, you would f*** over the entire construct that we have for referring to things. These are not standards you can apply elsewhere. Because, okay. because language just does not work the way, seriously, there aren't men That's... who don't speak English. Well, then there are no any things that don't, there are no chefs in Mexico because they have a different word for chef then. Should they not? Let's... This is okay, silly. This is where we need to get clear about the use mentioned distinction. I've been very right. clear. It's, but we can't even when move you, past step on, one. We've on, been on step on. one when for an hour. Chef, when we say chef. We are not saying the word, the letter C H E F. We're referring to some phenomena. When you say man, a man is somebody who identifies as a man. You are saying somebody can be a man if they identify with M A N, correct? No. I'm That's I'm speaking. No, I I this is very simple. Males exist in all countries and all cultures. It's just how we're built. And in every culture, there are sets of roles and expectations associated with being male. And those social roles, because these are social, because they're roles, right? That's not biological. That is what I mean when I say man. Now, different cultures have different words for it, but all of them are similar in the sense that they have this distinction. It's not the same everywhere, right? India has a legally recognized third gender. Like um, pre-Spanish um, colonization Philippines had like their gay femboy priestesses or whatever. I don't know. Different cultures have different ideas. And regardless of the words we're using to describe it, understanding these terms shift, they don't have a concrete definition because they're social constructs. Okay. Then the manner of identifying as a man is simply saying, this is the category that I wish to belong to, even if I reject What does that category mean? I, I, I just said the category of what we associate with um, but you already conceded that that is not a necessary condition to be a man. No, I, I can't. I can't keep saying this. You identify with the category, not you with all of the things associated with it. Like how I, 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 I agree. like how I identify with the category American, despite rejecting an overwhelming majority of what people consider American to refer to. So there is no contradiction here, because when you talk about definitions in this way, you can't disprove someone. You could never prove somebody wrong if they said, yeah, I'm American, like in a cultural sense, like, oh, you know, I love America, American. You couldn't prove them wrong because some of the most fervent advocates for America in like a theoretical sense have been people who hated the actual country, like John Brown types who would fight and die to make this country less terrible than it is who hate it and mm -hmm. its people and its leaders, but still consider themselves Americans. You can't prove them wrong. So many words work this way. Just like you can't prove a person wrong when somebody says they're cool, but so you can America, still think they're wrong. Americans are people who identify as Americans um, and then hombres in Spanish are people who identify as hombres. And then in English, we have men are people who identify as men. Is that correct? Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. So that is the problem I'm having with is that it still entails vicious circularity. But we've we've addressed the circularity argument with the cool argument. Uh, can we can we get past? So I know that all the language okay. bullshit. Like okay. wait 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 please please. Let's, we're on step one and we're never moving past it. I know that you don't actually care about all this and this is all second principles. Why do you actually? What's actually the deal with like trans dudes? Because like the language stuff bores me because I because like as somebody who has at least a decent read in linguistics, I know for a fact that all of this is a smokescreen that people throw up to um, waste time when they have a very, very poor understanding of the actual linguistic first principles behind what it means to be any definition. What like what's the real issue with convince me? All right. Let's let's say let's hypothetically. Let's say that I just I'm not here for the linguistic arguments. I'm here for pure utility. 
Why should trans men not be men, okay? A tra I'm pr mentally projecting a trans man using a woman's restroom right now. Make me angry about it. I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning this. I'm manifesting it. It's happening somewhere in the world right now. What is the deal? What's what's wrong with well, this? Well, I'm not really here to argue the bathroom stuff or the sports stuff or any of the applied ethics. I'm just here to argue on philosophical and logical grounds that a trans man is not a man. Um, all trans men aren't men, I should say. No matter what view you take, it still ends up being false that but all you, trans you don't men believe are this. Men. And I I don't think you should tell me that. I do believe this. I should believe. Um, well, you may you seem very comfortable making prescriptions about other people's brain states. So I'm just getting into the, you know, the swing of things. Brain states? Yeah. Whether or not a person identifies as a man. That just seems to be an assertion. It doesn't really need a brain state. It's an assertion of one's brain state. Uh, what how else could you know if a person what is a man? What evidence suggests that there is a man brain state that exists? What evidence suggests, because the brain state is them thinking I'm a man, and then they say I am a man, which is how you say okay, things. So the brain the, has to. It's the thinking you're a man is what makes you a man. Yeah, but I won't know till you say it because I can't read people's minds. Okay, so if we had like cognitively disabled adult human males, you would say that they're not men? What, why, why would I say that? Because they don't have the mental capacity to form um, conscious thoughts about self identity. Then I then I would just never know. I, I, I would just like proceed. So, but by your more. logic, they would be. I guess the term is a gender. Well, uh, I mean, if they were dis cognitively disabled to the point where they can't even think or speak, then I mean, I, I guess it wouldn't even matter. I would just treat them like I, that. That would be like me wondering whether they're an American. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not going to have a convo with them, right? Like. Why would it matter to me? Of what relevance so, is that? When you ask, like, why do you care? It's I agree that there are people that identify as men. The question of this debate is, does identifying as a man make you a man? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we have our disagreements and whatnot. We and don't have any disagreements. Wanna... We both exist in the context of a world where language works the way I say it does and doesn't work the way you say it does. Well, we both I, don't mind, I don't mind accepting your framework and then doing an internal critique. That's why I want to walk through this logically, okay? So a man is someone who identifies as a man. What are they identifying as? They're identifying with the category that is the social roles and expectations associated with males. Is that fair so far? Yeah, I think so. Okay, they identify with that category of the social roles and demands. And by identifying with that category, they are men. Yes. Like okay. with Americans. Okay. So if, let's say, um, a non-binary or a woman, um, non-binary person or a woman was to identify with the category of all of these things associated with men, by your logic, that would have to make them men. Well, well yeah, if they associate with the category, they'd be men. That'd be them saying so I'm men. I, I still think that would um, lead to conclusions like some people's gender identity is not valid. Um, some cisgender women are actually just closeted trans men. Well, if they're closeted so hard that even they don't know it, then I don't I, I don't know what relevance that would be to the system of self-identification. If they say that they're a man or a woman, then I'll take them at their word because they're just choosing to be viewed in that framework. That's all I really care about. Do you agree that there are men who do not identify with the category associated with uh, males? Well, no, because they're men. They would have to say that they're not men in order to not identify with it. Like if you say, I'm American, you're kind of going like, yeah, this is like the understanding of me that I project, even if I disagree with a bunch of people's interpretations of it. So if somebody said, I'm a man, but I have want nothing to do with this broader category in this archetype why would they still be a man for the same reason that a person like me could call myself american while hating america there's a deliberate contradiction and a value the same reason femboys call themselves men and sometimes take hrt have small tits and dress up in like maid outfits because they're choosing to adopt a role purely to reject it which is a valid i might argue the only valid choice um when it comes to living one's life you're choosing to adopt a framework simply to break it we do this all the time, like in the um, in, in, in the expectation thing, right? Like, for example, there are comedians who have done bits where all they do is go up to the microphone and say nothing. Now, definitionally, a comedian or at least a comedic act usually has to involve some kind of behavior. But the decision to frame oneself as a comedian while saying nothing is a choice. And it's a choice that wouldn't work if you were just a sound check guy. Then it would just be awkward. 
but a comedian standing up there, well, that changes the framework, even if the silence remains the same. It's just art. So the property that all men have in common is that they identify as men. Yes, the only category. Okay. Which means the category is the social part. Yeah. Well, okay. it's all social. Okay. So by identifying as a man, you think you just automatically opt into the category and everything associated with it? You opt into being interpreted in the context of everything associated with it. Interpreted. I Right, like that's people how people see you as such. Yeah, well, people will treat you in that fa in that fashion, and you'll think of yourself in that fashion. If a person says, "I identify as a man," despite being biologically female, I think that has a lot to do with self perception. I think that has a lot to do with how other people treat you, even if you don't behave any differently than you did when acting as a woman. So if okay, so you said people will see you that way, and you'll also think of yourself that way, and that is what I'm pushing back on is false because plenty of trans men. Um, society doesn't see them that way and they don't think of themselves that way so not all trans men are men under well, this use i think they're looking to be interpreted in that framework publicly not all trans men are looking to be interpreted in that framework well they're if they say publicly that they're men they are very directly you can saying you're a man and, and also say i don't want to be interpreted in that framework but what frame i've never heard a trans man say that what framework would they say okay so, so they're saying, i mean the i framework want, being i'm a man the social... but i don't want to be thought of as a man that's what they say? No, you no, you can say, um, I'm a man. And by the way, um, I don't want to associate with these roles, expectations you have with males. Sure. So they're rejecting them like a femboy who identifies as a man, but acts more girly than girls, you know? Yeah. So that's then a choice. The cat but I think then that the death, it doesn't, when you say a man is so you identify as a man and then a man is this category, it is possible to identify as a man and then not meet that category. Well, you're in the category. You don't meet the expectations of the category, but that's your choice to reject them. It's your, will you repeat that last part? It's your choice to reject them? To reject them, yeah. To be a part of a category and then reject all of the things people associate with it. It's not like any of this means anything after all. So, okay, okay. This is just a little bit confusing to me because um, would we apply this to anything else within reality? Like if you identify as six foot, but you're not actually six foot, like, why does why wouldn't that be the same thing? Because that's an empirical measurement. It can be statistically determined. It can be observed absent uh, any social observation or context. It wouldn't change culture to culture as long as they use the same imperial units. Um, however, if one were to say, I'm cool, that would change massively depending on what uh where you are sometimes like have you have you never met a really like nerdy person like they play D D or like 40k or whatever and then they're like nah, i'm cool i'm cool and like they're not in a broad social sense they wouldn't be treated cool but there's something kind of cool about the fact that they think they're cool despite being so uncool and that is cool but people won't treat them as being cool for that um unless unless maybe you know stuff's changing D D is getting more popular so maybe the fact that they thought they were cool doing that before people even thought it was cool would make them more cool when people broadly think it's cool. Now tell me, how do you logically disprove any part of that? You can't. Well, the only way to logically disprove a definition or referent is to ask them what that means and then to apply it to different scenarios and see if they special plead. But if you did um, that to the definition of cool, they would give you a wedgie and they would give you a swirly. That's not how language works when it comes to the term cool. I don't think they would do that. They would do that. They would. Uh, um, moving like to how would this be applicable to man is in order to disprove that somebody is a man, you ask them what it means to be a man. How do you know that you're a man? How do you know that somebody else is a man? Well, you shouldn't ask a trans person that. That's considered quite rude. Well, I'm talking about you. I don't think you're I'm trans not trans. Or... But okay. it's it's the same as like <laughs> it's it's the same with uh, uh, the definition of cool. I really do not think that language works this way. Internal consistency and in how we describe like social attributes. It's just a the most you can do is like an anthropological analysis of how people broadly understand what it means to be a man. And to be clear, a broad understanding of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a man are two separate things. Like if I were to go, for example, to like uh, Saudi Arabia and somebody asked me, um, what does it mean to be a man? Well, I would have two answers, right? Because that's, that's a complicated question. 
on one hand, I could say, well, it's when you identify as a man, because like, sure, right, that's true. But then I could go like, oh, well, the Saudi Arabian men are considered to be good caretakers of the home if they do this, and it's considered masculine to do that. And for some reason, they really like firing guns in the air at people's birthday parties, and they like tipping their cars over when driving on the highway. And like, all of these things are associated with being a man in Saudi Arabia. Um, but it doesn't refer to the fundamental self-identification thing. And neither of them can be disproven because you wouldn't say that a Saudi Arabian man isn't a man because he hasn't fired a gun in the air during a friend's birthday party. Okay. They do so like doing that. What, what, just to like shift a little bit, uh, what do you think is another feature of in reality that you obtain simply by identifying as having such? Um, American. Cool. So identifying as an American makes you an American? Uh, in like a cultural sense, like socially, like are you an American? Yeah. Um, at least it's not a disprovable thing. I mean, I think that some people might have a stronger case to it if they can, you know, make the argument, but it's not an empirically provable or disprovable thing. Being so a fan I, of anything, um, I think being religious. The, oh, people say they're Christian, Jewish, uh, Muslim, but then you see them like not going to church or, or whatever. Um, you can't really disprove them on that. Well, so that's what I'm saying. I think there's in all of these three cases, there are still necessary conditions that must be met. Like um, I'll use like Islam in order to be a Muslim, you must believe in a monotheistic God in order to be a sports fan. You must at least know what the sport is. I think we can agree there um, in order to what was the first one in order to be an American and cultural sense, you must at least identify with some of the American cultural traits, not none. So there I don't are think that's still true. There are there so, are Christians, for example, that actually believe in like multiple deities. Um, uh, and they're not Christian. Then they're they pack they're a different religion. Tell them that. Are, are, I will. Are, are, are <laughs> like, people are members? That's not how categories work. Wait, are members if, of the Anglican Church Christian the ones who broke off from the Pope? I don't. Yeah, if they believe in a monotheistic God, they meet that condition. That's so not the definition these, of Christianity. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know. I'm just. I know. I know. I know. I know. We were just talking about polytheism versus. No, no, no. I mean, no, no, but, no. This is important. The, yeah, wait, yes, the Protestants yes, yes, yes. were not considered to be real Christians after the split in the church, after uh, Henry VIII. So are you telling me then that the Anglican church and all the subsequent in Protestant order, groups... I'll say this. In order to be a Christian, I suppose you need to believe in Jesus as the Messiah. You need to believe in the Bible and you need to believe in the triune monotheistic God, right? Those three things. The same way, in order to be a How man... How do you get to decide that? What? There are people who don't adhere to that, who consider themselves And then Christians. I tell them they're not. Oh, the same well, what way that makes people you don't the adhere judge? to Because then they would be a different religion. They, they well, wouldn't fit so, that category. Okay, so Protestants and Catholics disagree. Are they different religions? They still meet those three conditions. No, but you're the one deciding those conditions. Who, who's to say you're not full of shit? <laughs> I think that the, my conditions are most consistent. And if anybody wants to challenge me on that, they're more than welcome they to have, do No, so. there are literally millions of people who would behead you for saying that right now. Like they would behead you for this. Well, there's millions of people who would behead either of us for even having this discussion. So I agree. I, I agree. No, no, no. But you, you just but, like, no, 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 no. This is the critical thing. You impose a fake standard of consistency where none exists. What you're doing right now, you just did a social construct. You're like, well, objectively, you're not really a Christian if you don't meet these categories. I literally just came off off the dome. Says who? Okay, Christianity let's, let's is a social something. construct. Okay, let's take something like a right-handed person. Do you think that's a social construct? Um, abs wait, absolutely. Yeah, people can use. Do you the think right, right or left and left are much. social constructs? Um, like in the sense that the relative. Like to you, I got, but like broadly, not really, no. Though actually, yeah, I would say so because you could argue like, is left or right a deliberate direct 90 degrees to you? Or does it refer to like 180, um, like a fan of view to your left and right? Different people might understand left and right to mean like directly or like tilt left or right. When you just say left or right, do you mean a 90 degree switch or do you mean like this or that? There are cultures that never even had concepts of left or right. They would use cardinal directions. Um, but just to be clear, you do think that our directions of left and right are socially constructed? Well, do you mean a direct 90 degree from where you're facing forward? Yeah, because I think anything else, we have like northeast and other measures for that. So if something was 67 degrees from where you're facing, so that would be um, to your right, but not like fully. Would you consider that to be to your right or is that forward? Partially, but not fully, no. Oh, well, that mm, sounds like a bit of confusing ambiguity there. Now, mm -hmm. if you want to, well, 
67 yep. is almost to 80 it's but it's more farther right. away from zero so it's like that's how mathematics works too so does it become right if it hits the 45 degree and then past that it would be right and then Same at 135 it would go back to be truly to the right if it hits a 90 degree angle just like a triangle it's truly a triangle once it's 180 degrees and you add up all sides like that's how it works isn't it interesting how socially speaking when people are saying something is around you um, they'll say it's to your left or right if it's at about a 90 degree from where you're facing. But if something's behind you, there seems to be a wider arc. So like if you're facing forward, something that's in front of you is in front of you and then left and right is here. But if it's behind you, it's kind of like just anywhere in the 180 degree slice. You notice that like if, so if somebody says like somebody's behind you, they can just be a little bit behind you. They can be like like kind of right here, but that's more right than it is behind. Isn't that odd? Do you think that like contradictions can be true? In, in language? Absolutely. Well, 100%. Like if yeah. somebody identified as an atheist and also identified as a Muslim, would you see that as a contradiction? Yeah, and those people literally exist. That's literally a thing. Wait, is, no, that's not my question. Is, it, is that a contradiction as being atheist and Muslim at the same time? It's not a logical contradiction. It's a semantic. It's not a logical contradiction no. to be an atheist and a Muslim at the same time. No, it's a semantic contradiction, but people use those in literature all the time. For example, you know, a person is happy and sad. That's pretty common, right? Like those are considered contrary emotions. Atheistic Jews probably outnumber religious Jews in the United States. A lot of Jews really don't go for the religion stuff that much, but they're considered Jewish by like everyone, including themselves. So I, I think the confusion is like the reference. When we refer to a Muslim, we are referring to somebody who believes in God. And when we're referring to an atheist, we're referring to somebody who lacks a belief in God. And these two things can't be true at the same time. You wait, can't wait, lack I didn't come up, wait, something I didn't come up and definitions. have a belief in something. It's either or. Wait, I, whoa, whoa, I didn't agree to those definitions. I don't I, I don't know what a Muslim oh, is. That's a complicated don't, you question. Don't agree, you, but you don't agree that atheists lack a belief in God and Muslims believe in a God? Um, atheist lacking a belief in a God, I guess it would depend on what you mean by God exactly, because, um, there are definitely like people who are considered atheists who are kind of spiritually leaning or have metaphysical beliefs that might overlap with what I would consider to be like eh, religious. As for Muslim though, good luck finding that out. Are the, are, is the Saudi Royal family Muslim? Because according to you, like Shias and Sunnis, uh, all of the, uh, Hadiths, about they follow. Though. Like take your typical um, atheist who just believes that there's nothing out there in ter besides like humans. Well, what about uh, people like- Do you um, believe that they, do you think it's a contradiction what if about somebody says that they lack a belief in God and at the same time they hold a belief in God? Clearly that's a, a logical contradiction. What about people like Elon Musk and the uh, idiots who care for him, who um, are oftentimes atheist, but- they believe that we live in a simulation that's being controlled by a higher intelligence, like a computer or an alien race. Isn't that kind of like believing in a God, despite not adhering to any sort of metaphysical uh, that's or religious? That's not what I was asking about. No, no, wait, wait, I want to know. If somebody believes that they believe that, or if somebody believes that they're in a reality where everything's a simulation controlled by a higher intelligence, some kind of machine entity or whatever, would you say that's a kind of religion or is that a scientific speculation? Because I'm pretty sure people like Neil deGrasse Tyson have also made claims to that effect. I think the way that gods are usually defined in the literature I've read is some all-powerful, all-knowing um, deity that is outside of space and time. That seems like it kind of fits the definition. So if, if, that, if that fits, then so be it. But I think we're getting a little bit off topic. Not at all. But this is, in fact, the exact topic that we're on. You'll never be able to find clear definitions for any of these. The most you can do is make an argument. Here's why I think these things are contradictory. But you can't arrive at an empirical no, answer. No, it's objectively because... contra Okay, so now that I gave you my definition of God, do you think that an atheistic Muslim is a contradiction? Can you both hold a belief in what I just mentioned? And can you lack a belief in what I just mentioned? Clearly, that's a contradiction. Um, I mean, considering the fact that we're talking about the metaphysical, people's minds can be changed on a day to day basis, depending on their personal experiences in terms of like an aggregate. I'm not talking about changing believe. minds over a period of time. I'm talking about at this moment in time. Can you hold these two beliefs simultaneously? Um, in, if your definition of Muslim involves not being an atheist, then no, you couldn't be both. Okay, perfect. But what so if being a Muslim did involve- Hold on, hold on. But these social constructs that you call it social constructs can have logical contradictions. Yeah, but there's no contradiction Before with the Muslim atheist. Before you said atheist. they couldn't. So now we no, can well, no, 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 no. social constructs can have I, logical I contradictions. I said there's a difference between a logical and a uh, semantic contradiction because I know Muslim atheists, like personally. Because they're culturally okay. Muslim. Hey, 
I put up a Christmas tree. Why do I do that? I don't believe in Jesus Christ. Maybe you just like the tree. Well, why do I do I that's a that very you need to do that to be a Christian. That's a very yeah. arbitrary thing for me to have gotten into, considering a total lack of religious belief on my part. And all the Jewish people, uh, like Bernie Sanders. Does Bernie Sanders even actively practice Judaism? But everybody calls him Jewish, right? Like I know plenty of Jewish people who um who are culturally Jewish and who know rabbis and stuff, but who don't personally care about or practice anything concerning Judaism. Okay. This may be. Nothing to do with the idea Wait, no, are they, well, are they Jewish? I don't know what, I haven't looked into Judaism enough to know what you need to believe to be Jewish. I can probably only speak to Islam and Christianity. But you acknowledge that like by your, you are or aren't a Christian, it would be like, you would be arguing like different lines for what it means to be Christian throughout like the time, right? Like you might argue right after the split with the Anglican church that like, oh, well, you aren't really a Christian unless you're Catholic. And then it's, oh, well, you're not Some really people Christian. people may define it that way. If different people can define something like that in different I ways. I ask them, when you say Christian, who are you referring to? When you say man, who are you referring to? What are you referring to? What phenomenon are you referring to? That's the questions I ask. But if the answers are contingent upon people's personal biases and experiences, then what you're talking about is definitionally a social bias. It's a social construct. Well, I, I never denied that all words are socially constructed. Well, if all words are socially constructed and we agree on that. Obviously, because who made words besides humans then we have the to concepts exist mind independent within reality christianity concepts, i'm talking about concepts in general well yeah but concepts can also be socially constructed christianity is socially constructed in a literal sense that okay, we've made that's it fine. um yeah so social constructs can still exist within reality though like that's what i was showing and you seem to agree because you believe social constructs can have logical contradictions the same is true for transgenderism well Anything can have a logical contradiction if there are mutually exclusive terms. However, yeah. the problem is, once you deal with how these terms are used in real life, you realize that very rarely there are logical uh, contradictions. More often, there are semantic ones where you can have Muslim atheists, you can have Christian atheists. There are plenty of them. Um, you can have people whose values seem contradictory, but then you look a little closer and realize that things are just a lot more complicated than you thought. You can have countries that are socially conservative relative to us, but have third genders that are legally recognized because their tradition for such goes back centuries. The, the, like, the, you will never, this is the logical positivism thing, right? The scientific positivism. These are not questions that can be answered with a, well, can you logically prove that you're an American? Can you logically prove that you're a man? Can you logically this, logically that? This is why I say, like, you kill English language. Because what you don't realize in a quest to ostracize the transgenders or whatever is that the standards you're applying would, would, over everyone, including yourself. None of us benefit from this. It's like, especially the trad types, right? Like the far right trad types where it's like a oh, Western hegemony civilization, you know, return. But you go and read Shakespeare or whatever. Every other line from Shakespeare is like a metaphor or an allegory that when examined in its proper meaning unveils contradictions that you have to accept and reconcile rather than to look at that and go, well, I mean, that can't be right. You should accept contradictions ever. If there's ever a logical no. contradiction on something, you should reevaluate. No, 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 no. Logical contradictions are not the same as just any kind of contradiction. If a person said they like are. they were, no, no, they're not. If a person yes, says, are. no, have you read a book? If a person Absolutely. says, I was happy, any, any I was happy, no, 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 uh, no, no, nobody would, literally nobody. If you said, if I'm reading a text and the text includes a contradiction, as in a character believes two things or the book states two things, like, I don't know, some life of pie shit. Like, if I read that, is that like a mistake? No. Okay, let me let me let me give you an example. Life of Pi. That's a good example. I personally have never read that book. I've only seen the movie. Do you think it's possible for somebody to have both read the book and to have not read the book simultaneously? No, no, no. You see, you still don't understand the meanings of contradiction. No, because you, that would be is, a logical contradiction. No, no, no. You still. So what I just said was not all contradictions are logical contradictions. Here is a contradiction that is not a logical contradiction. Okay, he was both happy to see her leave, but deeply sad. That is a contradiction in a narrative sense because it identifies distinct emotional experiences that are typically understood to contradict Hold on, one that another. That presupposes that happy and sad are mutually exclusive, which I don't believe. That's because no. a human emotional. Hu okay, is... what two human emotional experiences are mutually exclusive? So, yeah, like the reading book thing. 
um, you can either have read The Life of Pi or you haven't. And this exists for everybody on planet Earth. Everybody on planet Earth has what either read What two this human or they emotional haven't. experiences are. I never said, I'm not going to speak on qualia because qualia and like phenomenological experiences are a little bit more complex. Oh, so oh, just, wait, really? So wait, so. Just, just, just wait, to no, 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 no. That's wait, what we're talking on, about. To, no, stop. At no to, point. No, 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 no. We're talking about qualia. What it means to be a man is qualia. That's not qualia because you have no evidence to prove that there's such thing as a man brain. I'm sorry. Do, I'm not talking about man brain. I'm talking about qualia in the sense of accumulated human experience. Wait, what is, what does okay, that have so, to do with okay, man Okay, so brain? do you think do you think there's a okay perfect? Do you think there's a such thing as feeling like a man? Yeah, absolutely. And people what do people feeling, do this all wait, the time. What feeling do all men share? No, that's not how it works. No feeling. Yes, it is. That's no, a property. Wait, I'm sorry. Feeling like an American. What property do all Americans share? I don't. I never accepted. No, that no, 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 no. See, so friend. wait. Explain. So how does this work? Give me any example where a person oh, wait, could hold say on, hold on, hold on. feeling. If no, no, no. I, gender, wow, I'm feeling like a whore. Well, what emotional experience do all whores share? Wow. Okay, I'm feeling like such a servant in this house. What emotional experience do all servants share? You realize what you're saying doesn't make any sense, right? If like this just wait, isn't how on. it works. Is there a such thing as feeling like a man and if there is a such thing as feeling like a man then necessarily all men that are real men must have this feeling and what okay, is that feeling? can you explain so wait can you explain no, to me explain, anything no 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 no, no, no. so what, hold on wait I, I have i have proceeded this far assuming you are merely ignorant but i have to expect you're actually acting in bad faith if you don't realize that what you're asking right now is insane not insane you're is that it's difficult it. for, no 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 not insane is that it's difficult for me to prove or whatever. It's insane in the sense that it reveals so much about your thought process. Can you explain to me, is the sentence, she feels like a whore, a, a logically contradictory sentence? I never claim that. Okay, so because you, so I wait, no, 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 just answer on, yes. No, 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 we are not letting you walk away this, from this. I have been remarkably, said, let me no, let me it's yes or no, it's answer, yes or no. You just you said no, to, it's on. not contradictory. In order to answer the question, you need to ask for clarification. You have to say, well, what do you mean by that, right? And based on that like response, then you can answer. Okay, hold on. If you're reading a book where somebody says, wow, I feel like a whore, would you like with no like further clarification? Would you sneer at that and go, "Oh wow, what's what one experience do all whores have?" Well, it just seems that it would be colloquially what they're saying, but logically be false. How so? Because I don't think any of us can point to one feeling that all okay. Whores experience. Just the same way, I don't think when you claim gender has to do with your so feelings, I don't think this you can is, point to this. This is a wait, hold on, hold wait, no, wait, no, wait. Please, please you answer. answered, and I have to I, answer wait, now. I, answered your I have question. no, no, no. Can I please ask you, one? you answered. No, 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 because we're not done. I didn't. No, I have answered and followed this entire idiotic roller coaster ride of questions that you have provided for me, and we now have to hold you to this specifically. So you are telling me that if a person said. I feel like a whore without further clarification. Your presumption would be that they are committing a logical error because your assumption is that they're That's making not what the I claim. Said. I said colloquially, likely, what they're referring to is probably feelings of like sexual deviance or whatnot. Why? Not um, all whores feel that way. That's what they're referring to. Now, if they were to say that all whores share this feeling, I'm nobody say, says that. Nobody has said that. Well, you said that man is a man, as in the gender, is a feeling people have. So what is that feeling? Describe it. No, I didn't. Wait, I did not you say that. I have say not that. said the word feeling at any point. So I asked we're you, not you moving away that. from that. We're not moving away from this line, okay? So if somebody said, yes, I feel I feel like a whore, your assumption in a colloquial sense would not be, oh, they think that there's a shared experience that every single whore has had, whatever. You yeah. would think that they're referring broadly to a set of traits we associate with whores, like they feel like they've been put upon or that they're being slutty or that they are being sexually exploited or something. Yeah, like that. that's probably what I'd colloquially recognize okay. that they're referring to right. when they say that. And then so, I would ask them, I would, why would like, you ask if, it was a con if it was a debate setting like this, I'd be like, you recognize that this is not a universal. Why would you, you, why would you ask that? that that's concept. no, 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 that's so autistic. No human, no, I'm, I'm giving you advice. No human ever will ever say, I feel like a duh. And what they're doing is saying that there is a shared uh, emotional experience for every single member of that group. Like that has okay, never that happened would, in human that, history. That proves that not all trans men are men. No, it doesn't. No, and no, property. stop, stop. You're so, you're so out of your depth. So, your your understanding of this like this is not how people talk communicate your understanding of language is deficient now all i'm saying is that the 
saying uh, a person, I feel like a whore, they're colloquially referring to a set of shared experiences and understandings. Ones that might not everyone might get, by the way, because not everyone might understand what it means to be a whore. They might not have an expectation. So when a person says, I feel like a man, which to be fair, this is something everyone says, cisgender people, trans people, men, women, had all of them at some point have said yeah, like- it has a different referent. They're not literally saying they refer- they're Oh, refer it's almost like, like the language game saying. is complicated. They say, what I feel saying, like a I man. I never said it wasn't. What so, they're saying is that they probably feel masculine, but you even acknowledge that there is non-masculine men out there. No, there are not masculine trans men out Not there. just feeling masculine. What about, for example, what about a- um, That's generally what people mean when they say they feel like a man, they feel masculine. Th that is often a part of it, but it's not always about feeling masculine. Sometimes it's about feeling put upon in a way that refers to, like, for instance, I, I think I've said like, oh, I feel like a woman after I've been talked over a couple of times, like in, in a given social setting. I don't think it's feminine to be talked over. What I'm referring to is a kind of um, broader understanding of like an experience. Now, not every woman has been talked over. I mean, wouldn't that still be a feminine social role, though, to be um, submissive on people when people are talking? Hmm, OK. All right. So if we're t if we're opening up, I feel like a man, I feel like a woman. And, and I, include... I want to clarify that this is still off topic. I'm just pointing out that there is no such thing as a universal feeling that all men have. I've, I've never said there is. The only thing that all men okay, have is that they identify coming? as okay, men. Okay, now let's get back on topic then. What do all men have in common? Being men. Which is what? What do all whores have in common? Wait, answer my question. What, what do is, all whores have? No, answer. What do all whores have in common? Oh, answer my question. What do I all asked... What do all whores have in common? I asked first. I no, I I but I've answered this like a million times, and you have no, failed you to. No, no, no. I have presented it. so many contrary examples that you have not managed to thread through at all. You haven't done it with American. You haven't done it with chairs. You haven't done it with um. Now, I, did. I, gave a, I gave a response to the chair. No, thing. no, you have not given a response that helps me understand how this is any different. Now, I want to know with whores, what shared uh, common trait is there to whores? I don't think this is relevant to the proposition. Then, answer, then it should be I'm a sure quick answer. I'm sure there's some definition out there that I do not know. Then it's, well, then just uh, an answer. What's the shared experience? I don't think there's a shared experience, mind you. Shared, um, shared what? The emotional a shared state? concept. But what does this have to do with what do all men what have is in the common? shared what do all whores have in common? What do all sure Americans what the, have in I'm common? I'm not sure what people are referring to when they refer you, to somebody. So that the, remember that. how many times I've said now you're desperately trying to apply a standard to gender that no other term can hold up to? What do all Americans have in common? Well, there are still some um, necessary and sufficient conditions for being anything. What do all Americans have? Then this should be an easy answer then. You're American. You seem to have no accent, at least relative to me. So you should know. You've been in America. Okay. I'll say at the very least, in order to be an American, um, you must know what America is. You must know what America is? Yeah. that's, And I'm not saying that's sufficient. That's one necessary condition. Now, Fully you, disagree. You, you believe somebody can be American without ever knowing what America is. Yeah. I think if I went back in time, like really far back, and I found some like some some dude under Mansa Musa who was like this big freedom guy who's like ah tell, here are my wares ah hey, you for you a deal you know that I think I could go up to that guy and go dude this guy's American hell yeah brother for sure one hundred percent I don't I don't think they would be just because they talk a certain way but that that gets off topic because you did say an American is somebody who identifies as an American. Oh, that's one part of it, sure. But keep in mind that a lot of um, people never actually identify as a gender. They just accept what's given to them. I think that social ascriptions can also refer a kind of um, um, a kind of utility, especially in the absence of understanding of a concept. So, for example, our understanding of what it means to be a man or a woman would not have existed ten thousand years ago, not even remotely. But we could still but go men back and women in time. Did exist 10, years Males ago. And even under. Males and females men, men and women did, but the, well, the, their understanding of men and women was super different from ours. What it I'm, meant I'm going to be off what you understand them to be now. Off of what we understand to be now, a man today, they didn't have cowboy hats 10,000 years ago. Do you, you think to be a man has something to do with a cowboy hat? Have you ever been to Texas? Yeah, there are people who certainly feel that way, 100%. I'm going off what, you feel, what you're referring to when you say men, not how other people are referring their to Their men were different from ours, but we could still go back in time and point to somebody who's really 
masculine and manly by our standards today and go like, yeah, that's a man, you know? Hell, we can do this with animals. We do this with non-humans all the time. We assign masculine and feminine ascriptions to animals, buildings, vehicles. We've done it to aliens, fantasy races, demons and gods in our media. We clearly have no issue transcribing what it means to be a man onto things that have nothing to do with men or even biological okay. humanity. But you do realize in the context of this discussion, when the majority of trans activists refer to men and women and refer to trans men and trans women, they're referring to human people because you'll often hear trans rights or human rights or something. Well, like we that. are we are so, human. Sure. But there are trans uh, non-humans. Sure. Like. Well, there are literally like animals that change sex and gender. There are lionesses or. Oh, excuse me. I thought being a man was identifying as a man. Being a woman was identifying as. I did not know non-humans had the capacity to do that. Uh, yeah, there are primitive gender roles for um, some other species. Really, what? and they identify as men or women, and then they adopt that gender. Non-humans. Well, do? considering the fact that those lionesses, which were born biologically female, responded to a deficiency of males in their environment by making the choice to start acting like male lions, and even ended up growing manes. I would so, say. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No, stop. Because you're about to say something really dumb. So I'm going to be really, really clear about this. Okay. <laughs> Given that gender is a social role. Animals have social roles, like wolves and stuff, and like monkey packs. Their understandings of gender, we'll never know them because we're humans and they don't talk English. But if you're seriously about to argue that there's no social life to like these mammals, then that is like shockingly ignorant. What, and I'm no, just giving I you the chance arguing, to not make that mistake. What I am arguing is that not all lionesses have to occupy a female role to be a lioness. Yeah, but how? Just like Wait, not all men neither, have yeah. to adopt, not all men have to adopt this set of um, associates with the male category to be a man. I never said. I said they have to be. They have to identify as the category, not the traits within it. How would we know what category yeah, a lioness ascribes think, to? And I think this would also. No, you um, still don't understand the, the difference. The traits that we're referring to with the lioness example are the ascribed social traits and expectations with being a man not the identification how do we know what an animal identifies as they don't as far as we understand it no but there are male and female <laughs> animals in social roles that adopt the mannerisms of I don't the think other sex mannerisms they're biological instincts sure those exist pretty ubiquitously We're, wait we have biological um, but, instincts but yeah and that's what i'll say but i think uh, with humans at least the way i've heard most trans inclusive people and gender so, describe it is that it is an exists as a result of complex social interaction and i think this exists in the definition you gave too with all the social roles expectations we associate with um, males this is something that i think uniquely our species has done to a very high level yeah and i think in a very primitive level there are some other species that have d by the way what i'm saying is objectively correct this isn't a social thing we know for a fact that there are animals that have um like social lives with other members of their own species where they will make the choice to act in ways that contradict what you would expect for their sex. Yeah, that doesn't make them transgender. Well, I think that they occupy I think that role. when we call them transgender, it's kind of like when we say animals are homosexual for choosing male partners. In reality, we don't actually know how much of it involves like personal conscious choice. We are anthropomorphizing them or humanizing them by ascribing an element of our behavior onto them. When they, yeah. like there was those two gay penguins or whatever, like we don't know that the penguins are gay. We know that they formed like a life bond or something, but we don't know. But when we say like, oh, the gay penguins, we're basically just kind of going, okay, well, it's kind of like that. Same with the trans thing. I don't think it's even kind of like that. Do you agree that men can oftentimes and do occupy feminine social roles and that has nothing to do with their identity as a man? I I I can't I, I don't know how many times I can repeat this. Well, you it's, said it's similar. It's about we it's can't similar. know what an animal identifies as because they literally can't talk. It's a meaningless trait to ascribe. We only see their behavior especially considering the fact that the female lionesses seem to physically transition by growing a mane, which I don't even know how the biology on that works, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, like, again, with the, the concept of trans and gender identification don't work on animals because we literally can't ask them what their identity no, is. No, I agree. That's, that's what I was trying to say, is yeah. I don't think it applies to non-human beings, but you seem to. I think that the broader trend of 
uh, acting in behaviors that contradict what you would be sexually, like in a sex-based way, expected to do, and even physical transition are present in the animal kingdom, but obviously they don't literally have like social identifiers the way we do. Yeah. But so, they can be gay, sure clearly. Why that was even brought up because we can both agree that clearly this is a uniquely human social construct under your view. Uh, well, no, because it happens to non-humans in media. Oh, so you're talking about like fictional characters? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so when you say, I noticed you brought up this objection in one of your debates, like, oh, if we refer to fictional characters as men and women, that proves men and women are not just for human beings. It is kind of strange that people will argue that a woman is an adult human female, and then they will have no trouble identifying elves, dwarves, AI, or any other number of fictional characters as women, unambiguously, with absolutely no sense of irony. Um, it is it is kind of confusing, yeah. So do you think that, I think firstly, most trans inclusive activists would agree that a trans girl and a trans woman are, you know, human being terms. Um, but the objection with, well, there's, in media, there's other women and men, therefore a woman and man is not an, a uniquely adult concept. I mean, no, it's not a, not just, a uniquely human concept. They literally refer to, concept, excuse yeah. me. Um, so I think that in this context, we're using the term man and woman to convey that which looks like a woman. We all understand that they are not actually men and women. And this can be seen in an example, like a stone lion. We may call a stone lion a lion, like, hey, look at that lion over there. But that doesn't change the fact that lion is a taxonomy is based on taxonomy it's not based on uh, what you look like so, oh, that is, is that is an interesting point maybe a lion is more than a specific species of animal was alexander the great not a lion in his own right um i think the, i'm referring to like the lion as an, an animal here well if you so, said biological lion then no alexander the great was not a biological lion well, was he a think, lion do you take a, i don't know, really know enough about him but like do you take a stone lion like a statue of a lion do you think that is a real lion i think it yeah it's a lot yeah literally, it's right there yeah it's not a biological lion, but yeah, it's a lion right there. Like if you okay. pointed to a painting of a man and asked, is that a man? I wouldn't go like, well, no, it's like paint arranged like a man. No, it's a man. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't say it's a biological, physical human. Yeah. Yeah. Two minute warning I, before I, we have to go into the Q okay. and a. Oh, good Lord. And they, by the way, people refer to like fictional characters as women, uh, even if they don't even look like women. GLaDOS from Portal, Shodan from uh, System Shock. There are myriad examples of like people effortlessly ascribing man and woman, a terms that are ostensibly human and biological, anywhere they choose to, as long as the vibe is right. And that's what it is, a vibe. GLaDOS is a is a robot, right? We we refer to boats as she, you know. I just I don't like the idea of like we've we've had millennia of people playing with sex and gender as as descriptive and metaphorical terms and analogies. And then like, it's like, well, no, now that trans people have any kind of public visibility, we have to pretend that in reality, we've all adhered to this like nonsensical yeah. standard of medical so taxonomy. So if I could respond to the objection that um, just because we refer to fictional characters as men and women, that proves that men and women are not um, terms just for human beings. I think it just has the same way we use fool's gold and real gold. Like if I were to show you fool's gold and real gold, you wouldn't be able to distinguish between the two because they phenotypically look the same, um, such is the case. But we but know they, they're- But they know that like GLaDOS and Shodan- Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, oh, Gla GLaDOS I, doesn't okay. look like a- We know- She looks like a big entrance. robot. It's not like the, there's not like a trick. I don't know who that is, but if we have fool's gold and real gold, the intrinsic properties are different, such as the case with the intrinsic properties of a mythological character um, is different from what we consider man and woman. We just use it to refer to who looks like a man and woman. But GLaDOS looks like a big robot. I don't know who that is, once again. <laughs> everyone calls GLaDOS a woman. So, okay, take something like this. Can I screen share really quick so we have... Uh... This is... <clears throat> this is actually a great time to go into the Q and A because we have gone over that two minute warning. We do have a lot of questions, so this okay. <laughs> may come back up. Where you want to, if you want to do a screen share, even during the Q and A, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I do want to get to these because otherwise, quite, people will be like, "Hey, I've been waiting for two hours." So this one first. Want to do a couple of housekeeping? Here, I'm, I'm going to use the restroom, so ask Bosch his question first. <laughs> Deal, folks. If you have not yet. Please do hit that like. I always get like, I always enjoy YouTubers' opinions of this. Vosh, do you think that hitting the like really makes a difference in terms of whether or not, let's say, a video is recommended more or ranks more highly for a while? 
Or do you think it's actually just like, nah, I don't know. Oh, what no, unquestionably. I think that it's morally wrong to not like um, the modern day debate stream. Thank you. I appreciate that. But yeah, I really do. I think it really makes a difference. I've noticed with shorts, it's more clear to me. The more shorts, the the more the proportion of likes on a short is, it will get way more future views. I've noticed that where I'm like, ooh, that one got a lot of likes right away, right out of the gate. And I notice I'm like, oh, that, yep, that got a lot more views, which makes me think that likes are, at least for shorts, but I think for long form content too, they are indicative of whether or not YouTube is going to show it to more people. With that, we're going to jump into the Q&A. So thanks for your likes though, for, for real guys. Supreme Emperor Kiza says, a piece of furniture, <clears throat> let me just make sure this is for you, Vosh. Otherwise, some of these, oh, Sanvi's back, perfect. So they say a piece of furniture for one person to sit on with a back, a seat and four legs. This is the definition of a chair from Oxford Dictionary. It isn't that hard. I think this is for you, Vosh. Um, there are absolutely chairs without a back, without arms, with more or less than four uh, uh, legs. That's no, you don't believe that. Think for a second. I know your reflexive desire is to think, oh, these communists, their specific definitions. No, please, I beg of you, think for a second. Do you really think you've never seen a chair with? more or less than four legs or without or with a back? What about with a shorter back or a higher back? How high does the back have to be before it stops being a stool? Without arms, you know it's more complicated than that. In reality, all of life is. Trans people have just broken the door open to your understanding. Choose to grow from this experience. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question, B. Smalley III says, don't pull any punches, Sanvi. And that reminds me, folks, we have put up a poll in the live chat. now. These polls, in my opinion, aren't super meaningful because people oftentimes just vote for what they already believed in. But I want to encourage you, if you're watching live over at Vosh's channel or anywhere else that might be streaming it live, do want to encourage you come over to Modern Day Debate if you want to put your vote into that poll on today's debate question. Where do you stand with this? The next question is B. Smalley. Oh, we got that. Pointless Poppy says, this is just an issue of whether or not we want to use pronouns to refer to someone's sex or to use common pronouns to refer to someone's gender. Yep. It's like, it, oh, 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 yeah, who is that directed to? Who's that for? I is don't know. Like, go ahead, each of you. Look, I'll just, I'll just say, I, I just, I don't think this is like difficult, right? Like let's, let's get past all of the like death of the West whining bullshit or whatever, where you pretend that this in any way meaningfully affects your life. Everything is fine. Um, there are no consistent systems that you can use to perfectly govern and guide people's behavior. At the end of the day, I'm just the, like trying to lean in the direction of like kindness, equitability, and enriching human experience. Uh, I, I think that this is like what I say leans concretely in that direction. And I think a lot of people are just deeply insecure about their gender and sexuality and think that like the existence of trans people represents some kind of fundamental threat to the hegemony of their lives, which is weak. You're weak and you can be stronger. And I believe in you. Sanvi, any thoughts? The question was about pronouns, right? They had said. Oh, shoot, it reloaded on me. Oh, no, I hate it when it does that. Do you have any thoughts on that, Sanvi? Otherwise, I'm going to go to the next one. I think you can go to the next one. I think that might have been for him. Deal, this one from Sunflower, says Vosh. Majority of people reject the expansion of the word man to include trans men. Don't you need a majority to support expanding a word we all use? Uh, no. When, uh, for instance, black slang gets more popular, it's usually derided for years before it starts entering public use. That's not, if that was the case, then no word would ever change because you know, no one just comes up with like any change in the dictionary and instantly 51% of the country change it. Like, no, that's not how it works. You make a moral argument, a semantic argument for what you believe in. And if people are sensible and goodwill, then they'll join you. And if not, then they'll whine about it. Um, but no, nothing happens instantly. The majority of Americans support trans people anyway. So I feel like in this respect, at least, I'm still sticking with the majority. You got it. This one coming in from Von Zoom. Thanks for your support. Says, thank you, Modern Day Debate, for providing a neutral platform. We appreciate that. All credit to the speakers. They are what make this platform fun. Von Zoom also said, question for either side, does transgenderism reinforce feminine or masculine stereotypes? Sanvi, do you want to hit it? I've been answering these. I think that one might be for you because I don't believe that gender is based off stereotypes. I think um, people sometimes say like, oh, well, trans women wear these 
really pink dresses, and that's true to an extent. I think that overwhelmingly trans people open up the space for gender expression. The idea that, like, the existence of trans people is leading to more cisgender women having to, like, conform to traditional dress standards is objectively not the case. I think that in the in the abstract, maybe there's a conversation to be had about, like, what it means when people are trying to affirm their identity and, like, what trends they, they follow to do so. But I don't think that's just a trans person thing, right? The main group of people who are affirming, you know, like repressive gender stereotypes for both sides would be cis people. So it's it's just like, it's a, that's a broad problem. This one from Thunderstorm says, anthropologists trained in race and gender identification can identify male and female from the pelvis. Also, a simple chromosome test yields definitive results. Um. First of all, I know anthropologists, and it's not true. There's way more variance in hip bone shape than people think. And chromosome tests from bone? Not the most reliable process for long-term analysis. Seriously, like, you've seen guys, males with wide hips and females with narrow hips. Like, you know, you know this, okay? Not everyone looks like Nicki Minaj. Second point, trans people don't care. I don't know why people, like, people operate under the delusion that trans people are like, mm, well, if I take this pill, my hip bone, why do you think they care? Like, I have wide hips. I'm a, I'm a large person, you know? I have wide hips. And if I died, there is a non-zero chance somebody would go like, yeah, maybe female skeleton. How does this affect my life in any way? It's like the weakest attempt at a gotcha. Like, uh, maybe you're living your life to the best, but hundreds of years after you're dead, some other guy might make an accounting error. It just, if that's what you're worried about, like you're not already, you're not even living right now. You're already dead. You're already, you're a dead man. You think in terms of, of anthropologists. You are waiting for historians to validate your wretched existence. And they won't. You will not be remembered, but you can be. You just have to try harder and be better. You got it. Steven Zavatsky, thank you. So to summarize, Vosh hates, hates specificity and truth. Oh, Vosh. It, 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 it's literally, it's just cope. Um, I, I'm just going over like very basic linguistic theory. Um, not just Wittgenstein, not just the crazy lefties or whatever, but like broadly, um, any definitional stuff will eventually start to regress if you go far enough, which is why you have to understand it as a broader striving for meaning, a process of collective referral. Um, because if you don't do that, like you end up selectively applying standards that just end up everybody over. It's, it's not good. Supreme Emperor Kizza says, how you identify doesn't mean you actually are what you claim you are. You can identify as innocent doesn't mean you are innocent. That's true. Some things are different things, and some things you can identify as, and some things you can't. That different things are different. That's that's true. I don't, it's this it's, it's this attack helicopter thing, right? Like, come on, if, advance your thinking, my friend. Okay, you you are already a master of self delusion, so I assume you believe yourself to be many things that you are not. Okay, but I bet some of those things, despite any empirical evidence, I couldn't actually disprove you on. Do you think you're cool? Do you think you're funny? There's no way to measure that empirically. But, honest to God, we really don't have a better way of giving an answer to that question than, I don't know, do you, kind of, do you think you are? Really? Do people think you are? Just expand your mind. Look, look beyond this. Doughy Had says, how does Bosch tell the difference they between someone... <laughs> says, <laughs> the difference between someone who is lying about identity as a man versus someone who truly identifies as a man? I don't... I, I, I just, I don't care. It'd be, it'd be like asking me, like, how do you tell the difference between somebody who likes anime and who's just lying about it? I don't. This is like a Gamergate thing where it's like, uh, the girls are lying about liking video games. They just play Animal Crossing. I don't like, <laughs> it's, it, this is, this is such a non-issue in real life too. Like there's just legions of people who are, what, what are they getting out of identifying as being trans? Like what big social benefit are they raking up? Like, oh damn dude. Now like 30 states are like actively have laws targeting you and the half the, country hates you and it was it was all worth it for this epic meme like come on come on and so so somebody's lying about it they'll be like yeah i'm he him and then like a, a year later they'll be like <laughs> actually in my mind i was a woman i'll be like okay we That's got a couple we got a couple for sanvi coming up finally i mean vosh you certainly have a way with people oh <laughs> i know one... i know mr spencer thanks so much i this always warms my heart it says james going hard on the just for men thank you my camera's not good enough. I actually have plenty of grays, but I appreciate that. So, Bosch, you look bad. Great, trans liberation, y'all. True. Uh, I'm terrible. 
Uh, you do look great, by the way, James. Thank you. Like I said, I, <clears throat> I'm always flattered because if my camera were better, you could even my beard. But anyway, Secret XXX Stars says, Sanvi, can someone self-identify as a Lakers fan or does Lakers fan have a concrete, discrete definition that needs to be used to identify them? Yeah, so kind of like I said, you don't obtain any feature in reality simply by identifying as having such, and the same would be true for something like this. There are still necessary conditions in order to be a Lakers fan, um, whether that be you have to know what basketball is, you have to know what the Lakers are at the very minimum. So there's nothing you obtain by identifying as having it. There are still conditions that must be met. You got it. Thank you very much for your question. Coming in from Balthazar228 says, does Sanvi agree with Dr. Alden's research on gender identity as it applies to trans men? Whose research? Dr. Alden's. I don't know, but this <laughs> one coming in from B. Smalley the third says, I watched that clip the other day, Bosh, when Dr. Alden came up in a past debate. It's one of my favorite clips ever where we both were... You remember that? No, we were just choking back laughter and I couldn't even talk. Yeah, no, it's it ha it haunts me to this day. It truly does. There is a clip. I'll pin it in the comments, but folks, you have to see this. It was where there there was this, I think he was from Germany, and Vosh is debating him, and both of us just lost it. And anyway, Belt this B Smalley the third says, Don't let his word salad trip you up. Get him, Sanvi. Wow. Says <clears throat> Pointless Poppy says the fact that ignorant people place expectations on others for where they are born or what gender they identify as is a it's irrelevant to what the person is. I agree. Oh, I agree. Maybe maybe in, in different directions. This stuff is complicated, you know, it's complicated, but it's actually oh so simple. It's one of those things where you can make it complicated. Do you see this one coming in from? Do appreciate it. Doughy Head says, we don't treat socially constructed words in the way you view man, quote unquote, or woman, quote unquote. Wouldn't a sex-based definition be the best definition of these words since it abolishes gender when doing so? Well, we already have male and female, so there's no definitional gain because we already have the exact words you're looking for there, if, if you really care to. Um, also, there are a ton of things that we associate with men and women that are non-biological. In fact, I would argue the vast majority of things we associate with are non-biological. You don't see people's gametes out in the street, right? But there's so much to a woman. Listen, as somebody who thinks women are pretty all right sometimes, you know, there's so much. It's like, what, is it all like, like titties and pussy? No, it's not. Come on, come on. The clothes they wear, the way they talk, the way they act, the way they look. There's so much to it that's totally socially constructed. Um, to the point where, like, it's really easy to, like, do, like, man, woman, when just looking at clothing, right? So the idea of, like, we're going to fold all of that into, like, a biological term, that's disingenuous. That's just ignoring reality. We have to accept that sex and gender are different things, because otherwise we have to pretend that, like, you know, men used to have long hair because of biology, but then short, but then long, then short, then long, then short, now short again. And, like, it's like, like yeah, come on, right? It's complicated. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Supreme Emperor Kizza says, Bosch, adult, human, male, being is the definition of man. It's about not, it's about being not identification. So cut his, cut this garbage. So all of those fail. When it comes to adult, uh, depending on where you are in the world, manhood rituals or like uh, rites of ascension, this is more of a tribal thing, but like that happens definitely before like adulthood as we would consider it. And a lot of people today would argue that like you're not really a man and like what, like 18, a college senior? That's a man now? Have you seen what college kids look like? They're babies. They're tall, gangly babies. Ridiculous. No. Um, human, we call things man that aren't humans all the time, constantly, knowingly we do this. So don't know about that one. Uh, and for uh, for male, you know, it's it's actually really difficult for us to understand at a glance what people's gamete situation is. Intersex people exist, and there are far more of them than you might think. Um, and what's more, like you ha kind of have to assume a lot, you know. Uh, I mean, you've seen some trans men, right? They're they're pretty they're pretty beefy. They tend to be a little shorter, but they're short guys. I'm just saying, like your experience of what it means to be a man, what the men you know, it's it's not 
adult human male. It's a rich tapestry of experience and reference that I think we should be more honest about. This is what Ram D Man W says Bosch is an example of our education system being broken. Uh, wow. Be small. <laughs> Poor Bosch. Look at it there. He's just a nice that's all right. Man. They can co they can cope with this however they like. Okay. I just want them all to get better. I'm rooting for them. B Smalley the third says, Stop talking over based Sanvi. This one from Steven Zavatsky says. This is really one... surprising because I thought I lost the poll. Oh, the oh, James Chad right hates me. They hate me over there. Um, but at, I love that. At, at modern day debate? Yeah, yeah, they hate me over there. But I love them, and that's what matters. It's a one-way well, exchange of, of dislike. I care for them. San, Sanvi's right, though, that in the poll in the live chat right now, with 1,782 votes, what's your position on this debate topic? It's 50%, so a plurality, the greatest group, the largest group, say trans men are men, and then 43% say trans men aren't men, and then 8% say I'm on the fence. I'm not sure. The wow. polling results are so, intersex. Goddamn. This one coming in from, do appreciate it, Simon Allen says, for the course, not simping, although Vosh is gorgeous. Wow. Oh, thank you. Very I nice. appreciate that. <laughs> I've lost I told him in chat they can't make comments about your guys' appearances, but I mean they just couldn't resist. Uh, this one from Gabrielle Yu says social constructs are ideas created and accepted by people in society. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree. There's a lot of there's a lot of variability there too because categorization will always be socially constructed. Like the biological differences between all the species of all the plants and animals on earth, those are concrete, right? We can do clinal studies on those. But like where we draw the lines, like we gave names to all the different types, you know? Genetically speaking, every monkey is different, but we build the boxes. Well, where are the real differences? And that's always kind of like a vague process. I remember there was drama in the, um, the, the taxonomical uh, research field recently over squirrels. That's why I brought them up earlier. It's just, it's it's been on my mind. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Steven Zawaski says, the one feature that the most men throughout time and space have shared is being an adult human male. Just give up already, Vosh. <laughs> I, I can't beat that one. This one from Gabrielle Yu says, social constructs are ideal. Got that. Ryan, big guy, says, Bosh, I feel the same vibes that eight-year-old girls do. I like cute things. I love my mommy. Puppies amuse me and other stuff little girls vibe to. Mm -hmm. Does this mean I'm an eight-year-old girl? Um, at the most, it could mean you act like an eight-year-old girl. You could be a girl, but age is not a social construct. Age... Uh, unlike gender, is something that we empirically measure the advance of. I also don't like the implication of, like, predation, right? Uh, trans people don't transition to be predators. If you want to find predators, go to the Catholic Church. Uh, the idea that there's going to be, like, a glut of trans people who are, like, looking for... Like, I guess I guess I just wonder how this works in people's heads, where they think, like, there's like going to be, like, a 40-year-old man who's, like, actually I identify as a 5-year-old girl, now let me play with your daughter or something. Like, this just... This isn't, like... There are real problems in the world, man. Like, there are real pro- Like, why- Why make more up, you know? That, that's, that's- That's like, is it possible that could happen? Yeah. And if it does, someone tries creepy shit like that, I think they should be rightfully socially punished for it. Completely. But like, let's not pretend this is a meaningful problem that we're dealing with. You got it. Thunderstorm says triangle is from the Latin triangulus. That's so cool. Sounds like Ron Rusty, Rusty Smackle Ford says, Vosh is the weak man who creates hard times. Yet another W for Queen Sanvi. I agree. <laughs> this is what Stay Curious says. How does Sanvi account for intersex people? Yeah, so, I mean, I figured the debate was probably going to get into this, but I'm kind of sad I did it because... The more research I do into the 30, 40 common intersex objections like Spire syndrome, CAH, um, androgen insensitivity syndrome, a lot of the times they're still very clearly uh, male or female. They just have characteristics of the opposite sex. The only cases that get tricky are like true hermaphroditism um, and stuff like that. 
But again, I don't think it's necessarily relevant to the truth of the proposition are trans men men because what is it like 99.5% of trans individuals were correctly assigned their sex at birth. So that's my answer. You got it. This one coming in from Pointless Poppy says, Vosh, an American can still be an American without engaging in any stereotypical behavior of an American. Can a man do the same? I just think, I think cis men can and do all the time, right? Like leaving aside the whole femboy thing. I think that one of the most beautiful things you can do with a category you've chosen is to reject every part of it. To choose to be, you know, um, a member of a group and then to tear away everything people adhere to it. I, it's, a, it's like a fundamentally anarchic preference of mine. I, I like it when systems are torn down, um, at least the bad ones. I think it's good at least when you, when you play with them because it opens up the space for people to be free, for people to be able to pursue their interests. So, um, yeah, no, I just I think it's something we should we should strive to do. Push those boundaries, you know, as long as we're not hurting people. You got it. Ses Namaru says, a country GOP geopolitical definition is not born from the universe. It's born from the human's social construct. This is what Bosch meant. Same for gender. Yeah, so I think that the actual concept that we're referring to clearly exists because of mind-independent universal phenomena, like if there were no humans, the continent of America would still exist, right? Wherever we draw the lines on that, it would still exist. So that's kind of what I'm referring to is that the concepts exist objectively. The terms are what we use to describe concepts. You got it. This one from No Mask Poppy says, James, why haven't you sent me new selfies in your furry suit? James! As of yet? Thank you for asking. What the but, hell, uh, man? They'd be confused with you, Vosh. I don't know what's going on. Jezor says genders are socially constructed and built with union labor. <laughs> That's true. That's why we got so many more genders after the uh, turn of the century. You know, the union men um, fought hard with the coppers and the robber barons, and they gave us freedom. You got it. Ryan Big Guy strikes again, says, Vosh, how many fingers does a human being have? Um, well, I think typically we have five, but obviously there are people with more or less. Five, five is like the, 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 the mean, and probably the median, certainly, or the mode, or mode. Yeah, mode. No, the mean's like probably, I don't know, 4.999. Um, yeah, like, but what you're at, like the fundamental thing that you're asking here, right, is like, well, okay, like really though, what are we? What do we have? And the answer for that is like, you can read up on taxonomy things are a lot more vague than you might think, you know? A lot of the stuff that we take for granted, a lot of the categories that we built have been for our convenience because for the most part, they're fine, but you have to learn when to like wiggle them down a little bit, right? A good example of this, I think, would be that recently a bunch more research has been done into the effects of heart attacks on women. So women have hearts, men have hearts. The idea being that given the fact that the majority of medical patients with heart issues are men, they can focus the research primarily on men with heart attacks and stuff. That was based on the assumption, an incorrect one, that because humans have hearts and men and women both like have hearts, it works by the same, that we could sort of leave aside the um, intricacies and just focus on like male issues and it would work for everyone when it doesn't. You know, that non-essentialist thinking saves lives. And uh, yeah, I don't know, just a good attitude to have. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Daniel says, Savi, the argument as... X is a blarg, therefore X is a blarg. Uh, I'm confused by the wording of this. They say, also said his argument is not logical. Why is Vosh's argument not logical? Is it, it is the strongest logical argument, actually. They say uh, it's deductive. And they say you can argue with the premise, but it is logical. Okay, I'm a little bit confused with that. Um, I think there's like a different illogical aspects to it. One of them would be with the use mentioned distinction. A man is somebody who identifies as a man, excludes non-English speaking men, which we would punitively agree non-English speaking men exist. Um, another problem I have with that is that the definition is uninformative. It doesn't actually tell us what a man is if we use the word in the referent um, and then it's self-referential and then we don't know what a man is. You got it. And this one coming in from... Jesse Carrillo, 
Is this like one of your memes, Sandy, from your your uh, army of followers? They say, let her cook. Is this or is this just one of our sexist people in chat? <laughs> no, let her cook means like it's sexism. Vile. No, she's doing well, like something like that. Oh, OK. Vile you sexism. This one from Rock Truez says, saying that a person's gender identity ought to align with their sex commits the is ought fallacy why should their gender align with their sex yeah i don't think i made the argument that gender identity ought to align with sex i think i say warrant what gender is and why it is different than sex so i haven't yet to hear a coherent definition of man and woman and all our different genders these days I don't you think there's it? ever been a coherent definition for the record. I'm I'm on gender anarchy on this one. We're my says this entire conversation feels like an argument on evolution wearing a different hat to me. Anybody else feel like that? Evolution? Uh, I believe in evolution. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't get it. This one from Supreme Emperor Kizza says Vosh, the only ones who are butchering the English language are people like yourself buy an oxford english dictionary and stop butchering it yeah, can we can, i just i know that this person doesn't consume any media outside of like um hentai and maybe like isekai anime so it's probably kind of a waste of time to refer to anything from english canon but like <laughs> the the english language is complicated and beautiful the number of words we have the rich range of expression it's such wonderful stuff and it's so sad to see people who probably grew up consuming media, reading books, watching movies that were made with deliberate artistic flourishes that played with identity. Like, God, I bet a lot of you were cyberpunk fans. Cy God, imagine being a cyberpunk fan and being anti-trans. Oh, God, like the genre. You guys watched Blade Runner and then you came away from that thinking, yeah, I think your pronouns are like biological. I, I, I just... I like you're you're building a box around a lot of people, but you're doing it around yourself too. You know, the world is so much larger than you think it is, and you know, it, it, I'm just rooting for you, is what I'm is what I'm saying. Okay, I'm rooting for them. James, can you tell I'm rooting for them? I really yeah, am. Yes, there's okay. so much rooting. This one from Made by Jim Bob says, "Bosh is the term, quote unquote, social construct, a universal term, or is it a social construct?" If the former, what makes something universal versus a social construct? If if it like I, somebody earlier said, but like if it dies with us, then it's a social construct. The word social construct is a social construct because it's a word. The idea of something being disappeared along with us uh, is not a. Uh, you know, a social construct. That's like a distinction between stuff that people could arrive at through observation of the universe. Not of us, but of like the universe, right? So like a triangle is a um is is a is is like a universal phenomena that you could arrive at mathematically anywhere in the universe, assuming the rules of physics and what have you are the same. But the idea of like a pyramid, the concept of a pyramid, like in, in terms of like an architectural sense, well, the shape is just a like four sided triangular polygon, right? But the concept of a pyramid and what it means, that's like an us thing. I really, like most stuff is socially constructed. Even stuff that we use for like engineering, right? The definitions we have for like, okay, what exact width does a concrete beam have to be before you can have like a rebar in it? Like all that stuff. We choose those. We choose them because we do the math. We look at the data and it's like, okay, it's really complicated, but let's, let's, let's set a, a boundary so we have something to work with to make life easier for ourselves you know what i mean it's you have to know when that's being done because you'll otherwise you'll be played the fool you'll be a, a, a victim of those constructs if you don't know you're in them you got it this one coming in from do appreciate it b smiley the third says sanvi don't hold back on these people get them maxwell pfeffer says vosh is god he knows all wow you have to say, uh, Maxwell Pfeffer also says, Vosh knows what you've been thinking. He knows if you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So don't question him for goodness sake. This I, one from... I don't have a surveillance program. <laughs> Any thoughts? Doe Yen says, if all these definitions are just socially constructed, doesn't that mean, quote, an adult human male is a completely acceptable definition of a man? 
Well, yeah, well, yeah, if all definitions are socially constructed, then you could make an argument for like complete linguistic anarchy and just say anything is anything. But I trend towards use and meaning, right? Utility, how much harm, how much good, how much um, descriptive worth do you get? And as I've said before, adult human male is a literally textually incorrect definition that if you tried to use it to apply to all uses the term man you would instantly fall flat and it would be like like it's it's useless it that's why the adult human male thing or whatever like this is just this is like a over trans people term right like this wasn't being used before nobody in like 57 was like ah you know is writing a great book of literature like ah this thing it's it's always been more um illustrative than that so, uh, if you can come up with a better definition, sure, but like the biological one does not hold up that well. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it, for Sanvi. They say, stay curious, says, does Sanvi know that there's no universal coordinates in space, relativity 101? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Is this because I asked about gravity? Is that what it's in response to? It's cold out there, too. I don't know. But this one from Red says the answer is that there is no answer. Quote Vosh. Vosh, is this true? Well, in terms of trying to find empirics to social categories, yeah. Much like in taxonomy, you'll never find an objective, universally correct answer to what exact distinctions mark the difference between species. You just won't. It's just it's just not a thing. I just think a lot of people got like red pilled on the aesthetic of being objectively correct and they think that like they're the science guys who are opposed to the like illogical trans people leaving aside the scientific organizations almost universally support trans people in their arguments um but it, it's just it, it, this is it's like how Albert Einstein was a really smart guy, but he took a lot of his research and thinking, not just from like physics, but from philosophy and literature, because the really intelligent like Renaissance man doesn't just like ground their nose in like logic 101, because that doesn't tell them that much about the world when you're dealing with social constructs. You have to expand beyond that to grow. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Ryan Big Guy says, Bosh, you could identify as a Frenchman or a Martian. You were still born in America, making you an American. Your beliefs do not change reality. Wait, that's that's such a stupid ex like example to make. First of all, you can renounce your citizenship and stop being an American in a literal sense. If I moved, renounced my citizenship, and then culturally assimilated to another country, like it'd be weird to call me an American. I didn't even speak English anymore, lost the accent. I could move over to France and then be like culturally French. Um, if 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 there were a ship of colonists that went over to Mars, they would be called Martians. I'm not going to be on that ship, but it could be. Like, come on, why would why would why would you use such a transparently social uh, category to demonstrate what you consider to be like innate reality? That come on, think. This one coming in from Stay Curious says Sanvi. Why do you care why trans people identify themselves by a gender? Why does the question matter to you, and what outcomes are you hoping for? It matters to me personally because I care about truth. When I see people saying things that are not logical, I think it's only reasonable to say something about it. It's not that I particularly care how you identify care about the truth of the matter. You got it. Red says, so even if Vosh doesn't want to, according to his argument, he could technically identify as black instead of cool right now. Why uh, doesn't he? Um. Well, wait, hold on. Uh, they're actually are people who identify as a race mixed race people often have like a lot of social trouble because it's like you know um like if you're half black or half latin or whatever like uh, which side do i go with like you know where and it's like a code switching kind of thing now obviously i'm pretty pale and we do heavily associate race to skin color uh this varies depending on what part of the world you're in for instance in brazil where there's like this incredibly rich tapestry of racial diversity there are places where it's a lot more in the upper up in the air than it is here but keep in mind this is totally arbitrary right like for instance a half black person in america is considered black but there are half mexican people that are considered white because they're light skin enough why would a half black person not be considered white like they're not more genetically black than they are white to the extent that genetically black and white are even things the, the point that i'm getting at here is that if you really investigate the arbitrariety of race mixed race identification and all that crap you realize it's the same deal man seriously it's all complicated and none of it threatens you none of it threatens mm. you literally none of it okay you are being underpaid your excess labor is being stolen by the people who um uh, who employ you 
uh, uh, your your social opportunities dry up while everyone is forced online and real world physical spaces disappear as real estate developers eat up downtown areas and sit on them waiting to sell at high prices later. Real things are f***ing over your life and this isn't it. This one from Bite Me XD says, Hey, Sanvi, what's the status on you making a YouTube channel? You have tons of people that want to subscribe. And also, would you ever consider running for office? No to the second one. <laughs> but I did make a YouTube channel. It's Sanvi dot reasoning. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's really ugly. I have zero like videos up and somehow I have like a hundred subscribers, but this actually reminds me of something I wanted to say. If anybody has any experience on how to like start or build a YouTube channel, please message me because I would love to have the help. <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to put that link in the description box. I didn't even know you had one. I'm going to find it. I'll put it in the description yeah, box. I'll send it to you. <laughs> Deal. Seville says, Bosh, have you dated or had sex with, a trans woman if no why and does that make you transphobic practice what you preach i'm the worst person to ask this i've had sex with cis uh trans men and women i i filled out the punet square I, I i'm like the worst i'm the worst person to hit with this gotcha um i'm sure your experience with trans women is primarily like wojax or whatever but there are some there are some the world is full of baddies okay um, and at, in, in following with the innately contradictory nature of linguistic um, performativity, some of these baddies are actually quite good, um, you know? And maybe if you shape up your act, they'll pay attention to you one day. Wow. Made by Jim Bob says, Bosh, what determines a contradiction if not logic? Okay. So a logical contradiction refers to, well, it can refer to a lot of stuff, but mutual exclusivity was what we were talking about, basically. The idea of the law of non-contradiction, a thing can't be a thing and not another thing. That doesn't apply to all cases. Metaphorically, allegorically, you can absolutely be a thing and also not a thing. We do this all the time. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. How can that be possible? Well, you know, that's English literature. Um, if you, if you go to like, uh, 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 like socially constructed stuff as well, you also make an implicit prescriptive argument for any category you're trying to assign. So it's quite possible to like, while talking about, say, for example, gender to say like, you know, a real man is some kind of rugged individualist who like heads out there and doesn't let anyone to tie him down. But also a real man is somebody who sticks to the family, takes care of his wife and kids. Those are mutually exclusive modes of behavior, but the same society considers both of those to be true. And there are men who will say that both of those things are manly, that there are guys who will like idealize taking care of your family, but also being some kind of lone wanderer. And they're not committing a logical contradiction. We just have a really innately contradictory understanding of gender, you know? And all I'm doing is recognizing that. I'm not saying that like, because I, I want to get rid of all of it. I'm not saying this is all good. I just think it's already there and we have to take it seriously. You got it. This one coming in from, I do appreciate it. And I also just added Sanvi's link to the description box if you want to check it out. It's right there next to Vosh's. And folks, I didn't mention, if you're listening via the podcast, because folks, if you didn't know, Modern Day Debate is available on all podcast apps. You can find our guest links in the description box there, too. So if you're listening via podcast, check out our guest links in the description box there. Con the Stoner Lynn says, Sanvi, our adoptive parents... Parents? <laughs> I answered this question last time. Um, yeah, adoptive parents are parents. And I think what being a parent has to do with if you take care of somebody as your dependent, not if you're biologically um related to somebody right like we don't really call sperm donors parents or something like that you got it thank you very much for your question this one coming in from jamnik 06 says vosh thank you for emphasis emphasizing that seeking great understanding and deeper knowledge can improve one's quality of life and oh how we should be focused on more important things as a society. Yeah, be, be, being nice to me, oh my God. And yeah, it's like, I know obviously I'm playing up the being a patronizing um, snarky uh, dipshit to the chat because, you know, antagonism is most fun when it's mutual. But like, yeah, legitimately, I, I don't know. Um, I think a, the people most concerned with manhood are the people most entrapped by it, I think. And a critical understanding of the systems that they um, ascribe to would probably 
make them a lot happier and it would probably make them more manly too because people consider confidence to be a masculine virtue and insecurity is often a product of that uh internal conflict so yeah you got it supreme emperor kiza says bosh those species in question are not sexually dimorphic and those lionesses don't become lions by definition so well done for failing biology well, I, I don't I don't know how you could say they don't become lions by definition when you're citing the definition that you just wait, 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 what does that even mean? <laughs> no, I'm what, what do you mean by definition? The uh, the our understanding of biology. What? OK. Biology 101 is meant to give you guys a simple understanding of how this stuff works. You realize that, right? It's like when you take physics 101 or economics 101, like you don't you, you don't learn the deep secrets to confound the experts. Um, the stuff about like what leads to sexual dimorphism and like lionesses turning into lions or whatever on a higher level um, is like a pretty in-depth subject in terms of research and study. I, I don't know what I said that you consider to be a violation of biology 101 when this goes beyond that. Um, but you could really like do to look into it. It suggests some interesting stuff. The funny thing is that if you apply the reactionary logic to those lion, uh, those lion uh, tribes, what they would do is they would actually socially repress the lionesses that start acting like lions, growing a mane and doing the hunting, right? Like if you applied their socially reactionary logic, they'd be like, no, actually you can't do that. Or you're, you know, not legally allowed to fill those roles or, uh, you know, medically transition via whatever mechanism they do. I don't know. This 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 is a tortured analogy. It's just it's just cool. You got it. This one also, folks, we're we're 29 likes away from being at 600. So we appreciate your likes. Thanks so much. If you want, if you thought that your side was more persuasive in this debate, a great way for more people to see this video for YouTube to push this video out to recommend it to more is by hitting like. No joke, it makes a difference. This one coming in from Renhock says, Sanvi, define an adult, a human, and a male. Okay, um, I would, I'll start with the male part. A male is somebody um, in the context of the mammalian species with an expressed SRY gene. Females do not have an expressed SRY gene. Males have an expressed SRY gene. Adult, I'll define an adult as somebody that's 18 years of age or older. And then as for the homo sapien or the human part. I think human is just a taxonomical classification. We evolved from the bonobos to have the traits of our thumbs, um, among other things with our DNA that I won't get into that because I don't know enough about that, but yeah. Juicy. Samuel Monroe says, Sanvi, do you have a moral issue with categorizing trans men as men? In that case, how? Hugs slash Sam. Do I have a moral issue? Is that what That's it says? What they, correct. Okay. No, I have a logical issue. <laughs> this one from Wa says, Vosh, in Walsh's documentary, mm -hmm. I think they mean Matt Walsh's What is a Woman documentary, his acclaimed Vosh's favorite research, movie, by the Right, way. his acclaimed research text, right. They say... Multiple trans men say they will, quote, never be a real man, unquote. And some say they don't want to. So factually, all trans men are not men. Do you disagree? Uh, yeah, obviously. Um, when people feel insecure, they often say statements like, I'll never be a real ex. Lots of cis men do that. Judging by the fact that you're making comments like that, I would say you do that on a daily basis. Like, this is not a grounded, like, epistemic argument on the nature of gender. This is a statement of one's personal confidence. A lot of trans people deal with a lot of social problems. They deal with a lot of harass uh, hate, harassment, that kind of stuff. Um, it's not surprising to me that a lot of them would feel kind of down. Also, note how they said real man. Interesting question. What exactly does it mean to be a real man? Because I've heard lots of cis people say, both about themselves and others, that they're not real men or real women. They're not talking about this in some kind of trans culture war way. They're saying like, you'll never be a real man until you learn to own up to your, your mistakes and accept responsibility. Now what the f*** does that mean if man is a purely biological term? Because we've been saying shit like that for millennia. Where did that, where did that come from, huh? Were they woke? Is it woke when dads in the 1950s are like, real men take care of their, you know, take care of their loved ones? It's like, no, dad, you f*** commie. Real men are adult human males. Like, nah. 
No, I just, I, I know you're like desperate for the gotchas, but like, I really think for a second, because the only thing that's been biologically unveiled by the dono that you left is that your IQ is not high enough to have this conversation. You can work on that. Mercy Faye says, Sanvi, how would you feel if someone called you a man? Would you tell them that they're wrong? You identify as a woman, right? I would just debate them. I'm not a woman because I identify as one. I'm a woman because I'm a female. Juicy. This one from The Unwanted Man says, When will Vosh shave his beard? Is there talk about you shaving your beard, Vosh? Now, somebody in my community, by the way, photoshopped a picture where I shave my beard and I look like an absolute buffoon. Um, and now it's like, we'll prove them wrong. Shave your beard, bro. I like having a beard, goddammit. And there are pictures of me without a beard from like a decade ago when I was a kid and fatter than I am now. And I didn't look like that. So um, I don't need to prove anything. If I ever get ripped, like properly ripped, like like I have got the cum gutters and everything, um, I'll uh, I'll shave my beard. We'll see. What was the phrase? <laughs> cum gut. Well, you should know, James. You're in great shape. Um, you know the the obliques, the like on the side of the abs. And oh, okay, wow, okay. Thank you for teaching me the slang. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, I think I found the picture. You can make better use of it than I can. Yeah, you found the yeah yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, no, I, I should sue that person for defamation, really. That, that's a fan of mine who did that, by the way. This is purely, purely defamatory. Wow, you look great, Vaj. Thank okay. you. Much uh, appreciated. This, this one coming in from... You look tremendous. Thank you. Just LOL says, stop seeding ground to the left. This is... This issue only exists because we now allow a gender freedom. Gender conformity laws like the early 1900s <laughs> was high IQ. I mean, there are people who literally think that, but like it's so the, the actual like psychological explanation for this is that sexually insecure and unsuccessful men um, feel as though women are being taken from them by way of a bunch of social processes that are being brought about by progressive liberals if they're not fully crazy and Jews if they are fully crazy. Um, and they think that like the trans thing is just like one more step. Listen, okay, I've got a hot suggestion for you, okay? Trans and queer people broadly are making the world significantly better for you, <laughs> all right? Because, man, they are by far the most socially outgoing, communicative, and sexually exploratory people in this shitty country that we live in, all right? If you're if you're having trouble, if you're sitting in your bed like alone or whatever, and you're 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 feeling lonely, you're spending a lot of time online hating trans people, man, don't don't go if you're gonna bother anyone, but go to like a go to like a queer club or something, or like a bar. I swear to God, it's so hard to have a bad time there, you know? I really feel like you could be better than the man you are now. Wow. Thoughts on this one, Sanvi? What was the question? I'm sorry. That one was stop giving ground to the left. This only exists because we now allow gender freedom, gender conformity laws like the early 1900s was high IQ. I don't think it should be illegal to call yourself a different gender. That's communism. You got it. So <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't agree with that part of it, but obviously I disagree that a trans man is man and trans woman is woman and gender ideology as a whole, but I don't think it should be illegal. Wait, I'm sorry. One second. I just saw someone in your chat, James, who responded, nope, never. I'll pass. Bro, I've gone to shooting ranges where everyone's a cop and everyone's wearing a cowboy hat, okay? I've gone to farms. I've hung out with every single demographic of conservative country, and you're afraid of a gay bar? What are you afraid of? That you'll see something you like? You're such a coward. You're such a weakling. You're such a woman. Oh my god, I'm disgusted by you. I'm, I'm being feminized just looking at you right now. I'm, I gotta scroll my chat down. Whew. Sorry. Just got, got real worked up on that one. This one coming in from... <laughs> Mr. Sorry. Monster says, I didn't even see it in chat, but I'll take your word for it. They say, <laughs> I definitely believe what a trans man can also, I definitely believe that a trans man can also be a drag queen. Any disagreements? Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I, I literally have known trans men and women who are drag queens or kings. A drag queen is somebody who does the costuming as female and a drag king is somebody who does the costuming as male, but I've, yeah. Um, it's, it's got more into that. Traditionally, drag is more of a, like, straight, or not straight, sorry, cisgender, uh, gay dude going up there, but there's been more of it. 
Um, I don't even like drag, honestly. I don't like the kitsch, like, over, over the top color stuff. And, um, drag queens are all way the f too outgoing socially for me. But, um, you know, if they're having fun with it, hell yeah. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. The unwanted man says, what tangible evidence does Vosh have that he's a man? I'm the worst person for this to be asked of. Uh, I leaked my own dick pics, like, a month after starting streaming. This is, I've... I have provided a higher evidentiary standard than most YouTubers. I would ask, how do we know tr uh, Matt Walsh is a biological male? The answer, you have no idea. He could be, he could be a trans guy. You have no idea, do you? Hmm. Ah, maybe you should look into that. Spam his comments with questions such as those. Wow. This one coming in from, do appreciate it, Simon Allen says, just love. This one from Sunflower says, follow up for Vosh. Are you arguing that the word men already includes trans men or that it ought include trans men regarding majority acceptance oh that's actually a really really good question definitions vary like all over the place right like for instance uh uh people in different parts of america have words for like soda like they'll say pop or cola or whatever in reality when i say like this is what i mean i'm making a descriptive and prescriptive argument i'm saying this is how i use it trans men are men, but I'm also prescriptively arguing in favor of people using it broadly. If I were to go to another part of the world where, like, nobody believed that, I could say something like, you know, okay, over here they don't consider trans men to be men, but, you know, they are, because I'm making a prescriptive argument in favor of my belief system. It, it, it's it's kind of like, I don't know, like, um, like a homophobia thing, right? Or, or I would say, like, it's okay to be gay, but then I go to Saudi Arabia and I'd go like, okay, well, here it's it's not okay to be gay here, but it's it's okay to be gay, you know, morally. I'm ar I'm an advocate for that position. That's you a good question. I, I actually appreciate them asking that. Coconut cream pie says, you know, it's good. They say uh, Vosh performed admirably, but <laughs> since Sanvi is hotter, she won. GG Vosh, get a new haircut. This is misandry. This, this is misandry. I don't know what to say. Anti-male community. Eris385 says some smaller Christian sects may say women are not even human because of the original definition of words in Hebrew and Greek text in the Bible. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because like the current use of the, you know how like people say the origin of man and by man, they mean like everyone, like all humans, not just men or women. I, if I remember correctly, like the, the reason etymologically that came about is because like it, it came from like a Greek word and the Greek word that got derived into man in like the broad sense originally meant men. So they took the word that meant me, us, and then was like, this is humanity and like extrapolated it out, right? Which is like kind of a weird implication with women, you know, like where are they left in that? It's not good. People are misogynistic as it turns out. Balthazar228 says, as Vosh has started in the past, has stated in the past that he prefers masculine equines. Am I saying that right? Equines? I, I say, I, I'm sure you are. Would he also prefer trans masculine equines? I fully respect uh, all modes of transgenderism in the uh, in the in the horse community. This one from Simon Allen says, "Sandy, would you debate creation?" I think this is because you uh, conceded evolution earlier, or something to that effect. Oh, I mean, I was just giving a biological definition, but um, I don't know who who is creation. Are they saying that I should debate? Yeah, yeah, I think they're saying like they want to see you debate like Kent Hovind or somebody. I don't we don't really host Kent anymore. But... I mean, I guess it's not really something I've looked into. Um or some, but I don't know. I'd be open to having a conversation. All American Mafia says if the word quote unquote woman can encapsulate any type of human, what is the purpose of using that word anyway? That's Justify a... using the word if it's meaningless that's a great question it would be better directed at somebody who wasn't a gender abolitionist no like right now we have understandings of ideas cultural meaning associated with the words man and woman we have a lot of meaning like a lot a lot a lot of meaning associated with it so as long as there is meaning there is value and as long as there is value there will be people who try to define themselves around it all of us not just trans people 
I'm in favor of free identification insofar as we have gender, but my goal in the long term is for gender to matter less, not more, which I'm also arguing for here fundamentally. I'm essentially arguing the ultimate arbitrariety of gender, its complete subjectivity, and its ultimate subservience to our social biases. And, you know, that does kind of indicate that it's maybe not the most worthwhile social construct. I feel the same way about race. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Comrade Anthony says, actually, yes, you can have read a book and not read a book. I have read, quote unquote, tons of audiobooks, but not physically read any of them. And that's just the difference on what we mean by read. So like, I think listen to would be more accurate, but you can't simultaneously read a book as in visually read the words on pages and simultaneously not because that would entail a contradiction. Now, what you're arguing is that you just mean something different by read, which is listen to, um, in which case I also think you can't both listen to something and not listen to something at the same time because that would also entail a contradiction. So it just really depends. You just need to clarify what you mean there. You got it. This one from I'm that guy man so sanvi do you have a youtube channel if not will you make one it's linked in the description check it out yeah. wash is also linked in the description what are you waiting for folks dark e bony 89 says sanvi do you believe that transitioning to a trans man or woman is harmful to society in any way if so do you believe it is a priority issue I don't believe it's a priority issue. This one coming in from Emery King says, Sanvi, what do you get by denying my identity? What do I gain by it? I don't think right. all identities are valid. I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I don't think all identities are valid. Um, what do I gain? I kind of already answered this earlier, but I care about truth and you should care about truth too. So instead of saying that, refute a claim that I made. There is like a huge influx of questions for Sanvi right in this list. They say, Supreme Emperor Kizza says, Sanvi, I know an intersex YouTuber who I can introduce to you and they can explain what they are privately. Do you have Discord? Yeah, I do have Discord. I don't know what it is though. Maybe maybe you can link it in the description afterwards right. when I find it and send it to you, James. Can you be called a Discord user Deal. if you don't know what Discord is? <laughs> This one from the chatter says Sanvi is conflating the correlation of social concepts slash logic with the causation of mathematical logic, and it's giving me an aneurysm. What what is that? What is that supposed to mean? I've studied the philosophy of math, like it's based in logic too. What does causation mean here? Are I you familiar with um, scientific? Huh? Or, 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 out of curiosity, I, I didn't ask it earlier. Are you familiar with um? The epistemology of science like the um, metaphysical philosophy yeah like the the derivation of knowledge i've read a lot on like empiricism versus rationalism things like that okay just curious this one yeah. coming in from shan b 76 says sandy an american must know what america is so using one of your own objections to vosh a person that gets brain damage so that they have no concept of america is no longer American? Yeah, so I would say that I was kind of doing an internal critique of Vasha's view. I'd probably, if you ask me my definition, probably have something to do with nationality and like citizenship. I was just saying that um, identifying as an American doesn't quite make you an American. Just the same way that identifying as like brain death or whatever you just said doesn't make you brain death. So yeah. Excuse me. This one from Joe, Joe QR says... For Sandy, based off your definition, what does man up mean? Adult man up. human male up, or do you recognize a different definition? I think when people say man up, they just mean be more masculine. That's what that would mean. This one from Grim Friberg says, Sandy, would you correct me if I chose to call you person X instead of your name because you can't define what a sanvi is without pointing to yourself no that's correct so this is similar to names truly have no unless you have a name that's like a word names truly have no meaning they're just um letters that sound good together 
Right. And you can choose not to refer to me as the letters that sound good together. I would not have picked this name for myself if I could have picked. So it, it doesn't matter. But if you ask me to refer to you as a man, you're saying I identify as a man. I'm not saying I identify as a Sanvi. I say um, I my name is Sanvi. I like the collection of letters. That's the distinction is I'm not referring to any concept beyond the sound itself, whereas men and women and transgender individuals are. You got it. This one coming in from the unwanted man says, can kids consent to identify as trans for the purpose of medically transitioning? And does their consent apply to use their genitals? At nice. what age? I I, I don't. I, is it for? I assume this is for me because it's very weird and I get the weird ones. <laughs> um, so so I, they can identify as whatever they want that's not really like a consent because that's in their head so it's that's just them um when it comes to medical transition uh you know there are puberty blockers at a young age like 10 to 12 or so uh that uh, reversibly and without harming a person prevent the onset of puberty so you can have time to decide whether you'd rather take hormones to transition for like surgery stuff, like bottom surgery, that's like that's like an adult thing. Um, you know, like that's not like twelve year olds aren't getting bottom surgery. Um, that that doesn't seem medically prudent. I, I mean, I I will generally agree with like the standard guideline for practice that medical institutions have come up with on this issue, and because that seems to bring about the best results. We have data on it, and uh, what's happening right now with regards to transition seems to be like pretty functional medically in terms of the outcomes that we're getting. I do have to go in about 10 minutes. Is that okay? Yes. We're I have to piss like there. a racehorse, so I'm with you on that. <laughs> this one coming in from, we're going to move really fast. So Pointless Poppy says, why do you think our language requires us to repeatedly remind each other what sex slash gender is? Oh, I'm totally in favor of like the, the, I think it's real. I, not all languages have pronouns that are based on the gender of the person being referred to, by the way, like this is like an English language thing. There's different stuff in different languages. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's room for like broader change there, but it's kind of hard to just change a language, you know? You got it. This one coming in from Jamnik06 says, Vosh, thank you for, we got that one. Diego BP says, I almost drowned in Mexico once, but I remember that Vosh had taught me that there's only aqua there and that it's a social construct. You <laughs> saved my life, Vosh, truly one of the minds of all time. Swimming along the along the beach just south of San Diego, you're, you're struggling and then finally you make it to the, uh, yeah, the yellow tinted sky and you, you look down, you're fine. You're completely fine now because the water has gone. It's just agua. Hell yeah. I love not knowing Spanish despite taking like three years of it in high school and one year of it in college. It's great. Well, yeah, I was a little confused because you said um, like hermano, but I was like, doesn't that mean like sibling? Not I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Spanish. I know. Listen, OK, I know linguistics in the con in the in, in, in English. It's not not <laughs> broadly. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of this stuff transfers over, right? Like um. A lot, like there are, there are analogous words for most things between languages, thankfully. Jamnik06 says, Sanvi, in reference to your Muslim versus atheist argument, are you aware that a contradiction in terms is different than a contradiction in social concepts? This is, that would be a contradiction in social concepts. Um, a contradiction in terms and a contradiction in social concepts will go hand in hand here because conceptually you can't both lack a belief in God and hold a belief in God because these are mutually exclusive. So both would apply. You got it. Stephen Okawa says, off topic, but it irks me, excess labor can only be converted into free time, Bosch, not higher wages. Well, 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 yes, because it's excess labor. So definitionally, it's already been extracted for the wealth of the... Yeah, but obviously, like, if you took the means of production, that would then be the higher wage. Like, yeah, it's, this, yeah, it'd be charitable here. Obviously, more could be done with that. This one from... Appreciate it. Victor Land Verde says, Bosch is logically illogical. Oh, well, that means I'm fine, right? Because if it's if it's logically that, then it means that I've sort of mastered the space. You know, I'm using the unorthodox. This one from Kathy Tudor says, Sanvi, do you believe that the government should play a role in making 330 million citizens adhere to your preference as it relates to trans folks? 
Um, I don't think I really have an opinion on policy matters either way. I just believe that a trans man's not a man and a trans woman's not a woman. And I'm not sure really what we do with that in the context of legislation. I think the only things would be like sports, bathrooms, and locker rooms, which are heavily based on like sex, not gender. So this one from AJ 163 says, here is a definition. A woman is someone whose gender identity is female. Thank you for that. This is not helped by the fact that woman and female and man and male are used interchangeably because again, language is really like vague and and broad and and blurry. Um, But yeah, I mean, identification, I'm for that. That's, you you got it. And folks, we can't take any more questions. We've got to to try to read through these last ones really quickly. So thanks for all your questions. We can't take any more. Please don't submit them. Balthazar228 says, Vosh, will you ever be a horse? You seem to identify as a vorse hyphen human get, get but past do you them. think skip. you're a real horse no acknowledgement skip De- denigrate them with no answer this one from shermy yarpinis please says damn i missed out on two hours of arguing semantics wow sassy this one from gold brawny says sanvi do you love trans people yeah this one from the unwanted man says vosh answer the question what tangible evidence that you are a man not male your dick pics, which are not impressive. Wow. Wow. <laughs> haven't seen them. Haven't seen them. Lies. Well, the only evidence I could really give to me being a man would be that I say I am one, right? Which I do uh, uh, quite often when um, when trying to uh, shut the women in my chat up. Dotail says, I don't care if someone is confused, in parentheses, illogical, as much as if they are trying to force kids to imitate their confusion. We should be free to disagree, otherwise this question doesn't matter. Nobody's forcing kids, because completely made up. They did the same thing in the 80s. They were threatened by gay men, so they said, well, the gay men are forcing the kids to be gay. It's just, it's not true. I think the best thing that you could do is make sure that kids have access to information about all the ways in the world they can be, all of the things that you can do, all the paths they can take, and then whatever path they want to take free of coercion is the one that they arrived at freely. I think that's the most freedom-pilled answer you can get. LJ says, having dyslexia earlier in life, I was capable of reading a book, but also not reading a book, just reading words with little to no comprehension. Did I knit do both? Didn't I do both? No, I think that, like, for example, young children that may be able to, like, sound out a word but not comprehend it, they still read the word, they just didn't understand the word, so you read the word, you just didn't get it. You got it. That's all for our questions. want to say thank you very much, folks, for all of your questions, and thank you most of all to our guests. It's been a true pleasure to have you here. Vosh and Sanvi, thanks so much. This is an epic debate, to say the least. I had a lot of fun, and I, I, I really appreciate the time. James, Sanvi, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Folks, stick around. I'm going to be back with a quick post-credits after show, letting you know about upcoming debates. You don't want to miss out on that. want to say thanks one more time to our guests. We're linked in the description. And folks, thanks so much for all of your likes. We are two likes from 700. So do appreciate if you can hit that like button. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button because we have many more debates coming up. With that, we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. And like I said, stick around. I'll be back in just about 30 seconds. Take care, man. It was good to see you. Good to see you as well, Vosh. Take care. Take care. I had a lot of fun with that debate, actually. I think, oh, man, it was, it's the most direct confrontation I've had with one of this, like, fake logic, you know, like, uh, oh, ha, ha, via analysis I have determined p- pushes up glasses that it's illogical to be trans kind of deals. The thing is, like, what we the people, oh, man, people don't understand, like, the way these things work. With regards to, like, the word cool, you know, nobody has an all-encompassing, all-describing definition of the word cool. That is not a real thing. Um, no, Any attempt to, to fully explain the definition of the word cool will, will, will be torn apart. Definitions of words change in context. They change in different areas. There's, there's, there's so much there. The, it's, I've always been frustrated by these like quote unquote logic debates because I don't believe they're about logic. I think that they just morally don't like trans people. I'll never be moved off this position because I because like I feel like she was making every possible effort to not understand how the standards she was applying to trans people fall apart when applied to literally any other social category. Like 
defining what it means to be American or chair or this or that or whatever. Like it will never work because definitions are only meant to serve as a guideline. They're only meant to give you an understanding of a term so that you can work with it. They can't give you the full rich texture of a term in so many cases because that's just not how language works, especially since so much of it is contextual. There's no way. You could fill a book the size of the dictionary on the definition of the word cool and you still wouldn't have an answer by the end. You would just have a really rich understanding of the subject. Um, yeah, anyway, like with, with the American thing, um, that, that didn't pan out. We didn't really talk about chair that much with, with cool. I thought it was really telling where I was with, I was asking about whore, right? Where she was like, if a person says, I feel like a man, it's like, well, what essential quality do all men share? Which is a ridiculous thing to say. Like, nobody says, I feel like X or I feel like NX. And then it's like, oh, well, what they're saying is that there's a single common characteristic shared by every single member of that. Like, no, that's just, that's not true. That's not real. Um, and, and, but like, I don't know, she like pretended that it was. Like, if you really wanted to get into stuff like scientific epistemology, you understand that even the scientific method isn't an objective phenomena. We have arbitrary social standards that we use to determine the acceptability of like the scientific method, right? The repeatability of surveys and studies, all that crap. Like at the end of it, all of it is stuff we've built. All of it is stuff that we've built to make our lives easier. And then I kept talking about how like being a man or identifying as a man isn't about identifying with the traits, it's about identifying with the term man, the concept, the orbit, the lens. And like it kept being like, ah, oh, well then this is contradictory. And it's it's not, you know? It's just, it's a fake aesthetic of logic that is, um, uh, you know, that's used in, in lieu of the actual moral arguments. She was clearly hiding her power level. Yeah, probably, you know? I see the kind of person often in STEM. Well, again, I, 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 I can't believe how right I was, as always. But um, the term here is uh, scientific positivism. Positivism is a philosophical school that holds all genuine knowledge is either true by definition or positive, meaning a posteriori facts derived by reason and logic from sensory experience. Other ways of knowing, such as intuition, introspection, or religious faith, are rejected or considered meaningless. So, like, this is literally like Reddit philosophy. It's like, dude, bro, what if we had a belief system where, like, the only things that are true are things that are, like, evidence true like you could prove them like evidence like science man what if all things were just like science and everything else is bullshit now the obviously like i agree with science and the scientific method uh however when in application this leads to some really bad philosophy like really bad philosophy uh and the reason for that of course is because Positivism can be nice when you're talking about, you know, stuff like mathematics, even though positivists tend not to be fully understanding of what exactly is an a posteriori fact, as opposed to what is like deduced from it. But when you get into other stuff, like, um, like anything involving social analysis, things get really dumb really, really quick. It seems really susceptible to bias. As is often the case with people who enjoy adopting the cloak of reason, they will often use reason as a way of making their biases contagious. They will use the aesthetic of science to legitimize biases they have. This is, after all, what we saw in scientific racism, right? Racism, as we understood it, was largely a product of the transatlantic slave trade, and all the white slave owners and all the rich people around them were like, well, clearly we're on top of all the black people, because like we're rich and they're slaves, and we have big petticoats and they don't. So, like, there should be some kind of, like, science thing that makes it, like, scientifically we're better, right? We, we've got to have some kind of science thing that makes us science better than science black people. So then they, you know, uh, facial studies, skull studies, there were all those things that, like, you can determine who is or isn't a criminal based on people's phrenology, like, that kind of shit. And then it, it's all bullshit. But the people who made it up often believed in it, right? Like, they weren't just making it up because they were stupid. They already presupposed the validity of their bias against black people and felt that they were just trying to coax out the underlying scientific truth. You know what I mean? They had assumed they were already right for a scientific reason and were just looking post hoc to justify it. And I feel like that's kind of what this was because her standards for analyzing the validity of any like sociological claim or like definition would not hold up for any other word like they wouldn't hold up anywhere like remember when she tried to posit 
that like there was no such thing as a Muslim atheist or, or that like a person can't be a Christian unless they believe in the Holy Trinity. Dude, there are entire denominations of Christianity that don't believe in the Holy Trinity. But like she just so casually established like a concrete barrier with like no thought on like, wait, hold on, you know, because she's so because that's the bias thing in her mind. She thinks of a Christian as X. So like that's the off to or like that, that's it for her. Right. Like so that's that is where the line is. Anyway, I did enjoy the conversation because I, I did have fun having it. The part where she was trying to apply mathematical definitions of social constructs drove me crazy. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's logically contradictory to uh, um, to uh, em employ any kind of allegory or metaphor or or like any a term with a broader in internally contradictory set of of beliefs. Like, here's a question that I guess I should have asked her. Right? Okay, so masculinity can say that it's masculine to do contradictory things. Like it can be masculine to leave your home and be a wanderer, and it can be masculine to stay at home and take care of your family. Do you think that a person believing in masculinity, like there is a logical contradiction, or do you believe the concept itself is contradictory, fluid, amorphous, and, and subject to like definitional changes? I think she would conflate those two. I think in her mind, anything that requires like any thought to parse is like logically contradictory. She pulled a face every time whores, femboys, or porn came up. She seemed, oh, I got like major social conservative vibes from her for sure. Criticism. Historically, positivism has been criticized for its reductionism, i.e. for contending all processes are reducible to physiological, physical, or chemical elements. Biological organisms are reducible to physical systems. Wilhelm Dilthey thought, fought strenuously against the assumption that only explanations derived from science are valid. He reprised Vico's argument that scientific explanations do not reach the inner nature of phenomena, and it is humanistic knowledge that gives us insight into the thoughts, feelings, and desires. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty true. All right. All right. All right. If she really is just very socially conservative and is legitimately arriving at, like, scientific positivism as a way to justify those biases, then she would actually be doing the exact same thing that those uh, scientific racists did, right? She would be a person who holds a bias, and because she doesn't like a thing, she thinks, oh, that thing is wrong, like fundamentally wrong. And I'm smart, so it must be scientifically wrong. And it's my responsibility to prove that it's scientifically wrong. When in reality, they're just like trying to outwardly legitimize the biases they already had.